Good evening, sweet disciples of the uh, the church of Jake Hawks, and also Jamie is here. Um, <laughs> welcome back for another week, uh, another he's spin back. of the wheel, another roulette he's, he's, wheel. Um, he's, I had he's a, back. a vol-based issue last week that yeah. uh, has been resolved. Um, I, I just threw them all in the bin, um, so I'm free to do <laughs> free to do the radio again, which is nice. Uh, I hope last week was good, Jamie. Um, I sent a replacement. Yeah. I'm not sure. I just grabbed any old drunk off the street, so hopefully he was all right. He kind of stumbled in, you know, and he he, he maintains. Well, I'll be, I mean, he got he got more angry as the show went on. I won't lie. Mm, that um, happened. Yeah, it, that that happens. That happens with Ali. Um, we, we had a, we had a, we had a good old time. Um, yeah, we were kind of wondering what was going on with the Vols. You know, I had to explain obviously to Ali that this was happening, and uh, mm, mm. It, it wasn't really sure. Um, I kind of brought up the idea that were Vols worth saving. Um, but you've answered my question there. Yeah, I because you just you just end. just sat them off. I did. Um, yeah. What? 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 I mean, what were they? Just too much to handle, or were they particularly well, aggressive? They, they were very sick, Jamie. We've been through this. They were very I sent sick. You, I sent right. you the postcard. I had to feed the patriarch by hand, um, and once he <laughs> died, like there was just no order because Vols are a very patriarchal society. So the leader, the lead male, is really what the other Vols follow. And I had him trained pretty well, but once he'd gone, they were horrible. Out all hours, um, graffitiing the walls. Um, one of them insisted on downloading <laughs> porn films. I couldn't stop him. Oh, Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah, three or four of them were, were, were flouting the lockdown rules um, completely. Is that, um, is that a thing? I don't know, Jamie. Okay. I'm making all of this up on the fly. <laughs> but they're gone now. Um, they're, they're away. Um, it's this isn't like a story of Tarzan, for example, where no, the vol this is grows up to be man, a human. Man but conquers thinks nature. Thing. Yeah, once again, humans win. Um, a real twenty twenty story do, there. But it's, it's, it's good to have you back, though. It's good to have you back. You know, and uh, uh, you know, Just happy to be here. You know, it's it's nice. You know, I didn't I didn't know I like what to do wallpaper. last week. It's it's very nice. Yeah, it's called my blood. Um, oh, I didn't know it'd be such an name, unhealthy shade of, the, of yellow. That's that's <laughs> that's the name of the Dulux, uh, the Dulux Radiant, if you uh, will. Is it called my blood or is it called Jamie's blood? It's it's called Jamie's blood. It's a it's a real oh, sponsorship nice. deal I signed while you were away. Oh, um, lovely. I thought it would do. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants um, Jamie's blood on your walls, um, go to a store. Obviously, be socially distanced. We're not asking you to walk up to people, hug them, and be like, "Where is the wallpaper um, color?" Um, but you know. It's there. It's on the table. That's all I'm saying. We're moving out. Great. We're branching out. Um, I just want to say, um, Ali's, Ali's left you a note. He said to read out to you when you, when yeah, you came back. Yeah, I did back. do that, but I, I can't read, so obviously you'll have to read um, it to me. Um, I can, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a read. So he's just, um, he's been quite sharp with what he's saying. I won't lie. Mm, mm-hmm. um, but he's, you know, no surprise there. It's Ali, isn't it? Um, well, so quite, he's gone, yeah. he's gone, gone, hearing an alarm. Putting on a sign, carrying a handbag, receptionist, <laughs> caffeine filler air, taking a lift, seeing your second family, Ooh. watercolour conversation, watercolour, <laughs> watercolour conversation, water, broad water, stroke, water, kind of bleeds into each other. <laughs> Don't they all? Uh, watercolour conversations, proper bants, the boss's jokes, plastic plants, office gossip, those weird carpets, face-to-face meetings. Not having to make a lunch, seating, be seating, accidentally replying all, hearing buzzwords, leaving early for a cheeky afternoon in the sun. Jake Hawks. Is that a fair summary well, of, of you? I um I don't think he's written that himself, to be honest. I think what, he's nicked that off an he, advert. Is he as ooh, ooh plagiarism? Or, or maybe the advert nicked it off him. Because that does know. sum I me mean, up, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean weird yeah, yeah. carpets, coffee, caffeine-filled air, uh, holding yeah. a handbag, um, proper bants, proper bants, obviously, watercolor yeah. conversation, famously. <laughs> uh, That's <me> you. <laughs> BCCing, you know me. I love to BCC and CC and can't CCB stop and stop ABBA him. and ACDC. All of that, you know, I Oof. love it. Oh, does them all. Um, and yeah, plastic plants. You are a plastic plant man. In That's a plastic true. plant world. I, I do actually um, love plastic plants. I can't. I refuse to have that on it. I hate them. They're the worst thing. They're fake. They're awful. They're fake. Yeah, aren't I'm they? not going to get into it, but they're awful. Also, I've noticed with you lifting that note up off of my desk, Ali's brought us something else in, Jamie. 
what was that? What, 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 what's, what's, what's he done? It's the, what's he, what's it's he the done? world's thinnest envelope, but it's got Dork <laughs> Mailbag written on it. So uh, I think that must be it for the week. So why don't we um, unseal, ungum the envelope and uh, have a little uh, little delve, a little route around in the mailbag, Jamie? Yeah, see what, people, like? see what people see what people are asking. You know, it's always you know as 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 we say every single week. It's not even an ask. It's more of a beg at this point. Um, mm. We are here. We are. We literally don't do anything outside of this. We literally just stare at each other for six we do, days, waiting for the mailbag. That's it. Wait, and then it and arrives. We're about, and, we're about three yeah. inches away from each other too, so we're just staring very deeply into each other's yeah. eyes. Um, it's quite intimate, and then, really. And then backing off a meter every time one of us has to breathe, and then coming back in. It's a real, it's a dance, if you will. If life is a dance, mm. we're doing the tango. A slow and beautiful waltz. It's the glorious. First letter, it's glorious. Oh yes, the go for first it. first letter is from a, well, I must say, a rather irritable person um this is from oh. bruce from none of your business um Whoa. i Hello. know and the interesting Hello. thing is there isn't even a template for him to fill out so it's not like we've said where yeah, he's from and he's put none of your demanded. business he's actually written none of your business um, just off the intersection of fuck yourself lane by the sounds of it basically Heavens yeah uh, so bruce well, is it... dead I've reported that foul-mouthed old man, old man who was on the show last week to Ofcom. And that's all he's got for us. That's all he's got to say. Yeah, I mean, I it. hope he's not talking about me. Cause, um, well, I, I imagine if I, he's a long-term listener, then he's probably used to you. Um, yeah, so he's it must kind of... Be, it him, must be Ali. Well, I mean, um, he did, he did I mean, go look, for it. He did say look, a lot of things. I just want to say that I think Ali was great. And it's not like I sit he here making up fake people and writing letters from them to say otherwise. So this must you be a real comment. I wouldn't do that. So this is a real comment from the public, and I don't think it's representative of how we feel about Ali mm. on the show. But I guess it does just show that I am a superior host. And it's not something that I'm worried about or at all concerned about. Um, it's not something that's been keeping me up at night. I just want to say it, that obviously Bruce agrees Bruce, so like, Bruce is the one who said bed, it. All yeah. right, that I'm better than, than Ali is at this, right? <laughs> so it's fine, and we can just say that, and that's been said, right? And that's true. Yeah, because it's from Bruce. It's an opinion it's that, from it's Bruce. Bruce. Bruce has said yeah. it, not, not us. Bruce has said Bruce. this. We don't know where he's from. It's just Bruce, you know? Um, exactly. I mean, all feedback is welcome. We, we mm. welcome it every single week. Um, we, we like to build up our confidence, but then knock it back down a bit. Um, so yeah, Ali had his like, run in the sun like one of those charts um, where house prices go up and then there's a recession and then they go up again it's that kind of thing it's a sort of one of those yeah. if you're into maths you can probably tell us what that is where it goes up and down sort of periodically tell us yeah let us know we're in, let us know yeah yeah, we're, we're, in the, we're on the lookout for a nice little cottage that we can retire to um, where we will forever that's more that's not related at all but okay oh um, we not I was talking about the we graphs not. themselves mate not the, co- oh, not the not. houses Oh, that that not public knowledge we should be letting out there. Danny, I just don't think people are ready to accept two radio hosts living together. <laughs> Isn't that what Anton Beck do? They just live in like Exactly. And look, uh-huh. the world yeah. is not the world's not ready for them. Because yeah. they're awful. <laughs> Famously. So Yeah. Oh. Anyway. Good feedback though. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you, Bruce. Um and then Izzy from Trowbridge is the second second entrant into the mailbag. Sorry, from where? From where? From Trowbridge. Trowbridge. I, I where? believe it's uh, I believe it's in Somerset. Oh, hello. So like uh, summer solstice, all that jazz, all goes down there, doesn't it? Really? I mean, that happens uh, worldwide. The summer solstice. It's just a thing that happens. Yeah, but it's like you know, Glastonbury happens everywhere because BBC stream it. Um, <laughs> And so the summer solstice You're happens. Right, yeah, the summer solstice happens in Glastonbury, and then the sun just copies and pastes it around the world. Yeah, this, there we go. Okay, I, I just wanted to make sure I was I was bang on because you know you were um, as always, well, Jamie. You are the you, best Rick. of us. I appreciate. It. What is um? What is, is it? Is it Izzy? What's Izzy saying? It is Izzy. Izzy from Trevor. It says hi, Dork. Uh, hi, Izzy. Hello. Uh, how are you? Don't answer. We can't hear you. Um, hi, Dork. Now it's getting colder. <laughs> Is it ever acceptable for a man to wear a cardigan? Jamie, thoughts? <laughs> I mean, is it ever acceptable? Uh, I would say yes. 
I think there's nothing okay. wrong with there's I mean there's nothing wrong with a cardigan. Um, I feel like cardigans have gone out of fashion a little bit. Um, obviously, Taylor Swift is bringing bringing that back, so I expect mm. to see a lot of cardigans mm. this winter. But um, I think it's I think it's acceptable to wear a cardigan. You know, nice little. You could be a little woolen guy. You know, it's it's quite a nice mm. garment, if you will. I am I'm partial to a, a cardigan or two in my time. And okay. uh, who knows? Maybe I'll um, I'll dash out a cardigan of my own uh, this winter. Cause you don't want to get cold. You don't want to get cold. Um, no, but I mean, but there the winter, are other options, know. aren't there? Yeah, but it's either what big coat or what jumper. Jumper is the obvious one. Yeah. Yeah, but sometimes you want to be you want to be free, man. You know, you want to let the a nice fleece. <sighs> and see, now this is this is where I get I get muddled up here. So, what what's the difference between a fleece? A jumper a and fleece, a cardigan. A, f- a fleece is a zip up, right? Right. A jumper okay. is a pullover that's knitted. A sweatshirt is no... a pullover that isn't yeah. knitted. It's that the you know, and then a cardigan is is the button up kind of woolen right, dealy. Right. Right. See, ease of access. You never know when you need to whack off. You know, your cardigan. And, well, if anything, and that's a the fleece issue. is better because that's a zip. A cardigan, you got to do all the buttons. Yeah, but. Uh... Look, in the night, I, I think the f- a fleece for me, and I, hey, hey, I am no Giovanni Versace, all right? That's all I'm saying, first Famously of all. Famously not, no. Famously not. Um, I just, the, the fleece makes you look like, I don't know, you're about to go carry some timber wood home. And, and I. Yeah, but I mean, isn't I, that preferable to the I'm cardigan, not. which makes it look like you're about to go to school and put your hand up and ask the teacher why they haven't given you any homework? I think it depends on the cardigan here, Jake. It doesn't, I think I'm it really afraid. Just depends. No, we're agreed. Cardigans are terrible. We can move on now. <laughs> Thank you, Izzy, there, for asking. I think cardigans are are unfortunately accepted, but never acceptable, I think is what I would say. And I think Jane, Jamie's with me on that one. Um, so we can just uh, move I mean, on. I, I, I mean, I, I guess so. I know what I'm wearing next time I see you, though. Um, the best cardigan I've got, um, which the at the moment is none. you've got. Is none. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. I look forward to it. I look forward to seeing you sans cardigan, you raunchy man. (laughs) Right, think of it this way, right? right, You've just, you've you've gone out. You're not expecting the pool. You've gone out. It's a winter's time. You've got the cardigan on. You get back to the flat and you're getting hot and heavy and you say, excuse me, I just have to unbutton my cardigan. That's not good, is it? What, compared to a fleece? Well, I'm not saying, I, I, yeah, I just have to unzip my fleece. It's also bad, but you know, I think. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Maybe, so you know, that's just... why all clothing should have poppers for sort of yeah, uh, yeah. stripper vibes. No matter what, oh, so you know, it's just like... like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Right one, one swift motion. I don't think I, I, I poppers again is another. Um, you know, well, there are many people who are fans of poppers, famously. You don't um, think poppers are saying, a sex aid? Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is, is I don't think it's the most um, sensual um, way oh, to bring meant- clothes together. Uh, maybe you could have a sort of a gumming that gums it shut that tastes like strawberry and someone could lick it off, uh, which would then open up the cardigan for sex time. I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of what's actually the best. I don't think there is. I think you either have to... Coat? No top underneath, just a waistcoat. <laughs> But that looks like I don't know. You've been, you've been, you've you been working like behind the bar monkey, somewhere. Don't you, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look like you've you've been working away somewhere and then decided to come back and you're like, oh. So what we've decided the way, is there is no sexy clothing. No, no, unless. No. Well, I don't know. Have you ever? Mm, have you ever seen like an all-in-one? Like, how would I describe it? It's not a jumpsuit. It's not a jumpsuit because that would suggest I don't know that you've been, I don't know, behind okay. bars somewhere. A, a, you haven't, suit, you haven't been... a romper, a boiler suit. I got a, a boiler. A boiler suit's a bit too tough, and it just reminds me of Slipknot. Do you know what I mean? You don't need that, yeah, do you? When yeah, it's you no. know, I, yeah, don't you don't need that. Sounds like you're making um, up an item of clothing. No, I think I a think. Sack. Are you talking about a sack? Potentially, because that's easy, isn't it? Like you can just get rid of it and you're done, aren't you? 
Um, Step five you have to it, because they're so cheap, it. and that'd be that'd be hot, wouldn't it? People would be yeah, like, "Wow, that, how are you going to get that trick. stack off? You light it, it's like, or you emerge like the phoenix, badly burnt and in a lot of pain." Yeah, I was about to say that you would have to call nine nine nine, but maybe that's what you need on a night out every now and then, just mm. a little bit of in reminder the that you know, the life happy Mondays, is going. call the cops. <laughs> So thank you, Izzy, for your question. And the answer is yes. The only sexy item of clothing is a sack. Um, yeah, now, sacks only. Music news. Music news, Jake. It's been it's been a week. There's many Two news weeks bits to, to me. cover. I know. I, I mean, I'm surprised you know what you're doing now. Um, it's been that oh, long. The landscape of popular um, music could have changed since I was last here. And it has. Uh, no, it hasn't. Oh, it has, is Calypso it's, back? It's, no, oh, it, okay. it certainly is. Uh, the specials are back once again. No, they're not. They're they're just there about. Um, we're talking about the Ivan Novello Awards first of all. Jake. Oh my, um, very upmarket. Award season is here. It's alive. Yes, nothing's really happened for the past six months, but let's celebrate it. Let's throw a bash and celebrate and give awards to people. That's what we want to do. <laughs> Uh, it the makes sense, are kind it? Of like, yeah, the Ivan Arvin Novellos are kind of like, I don't know, I guess if you've got like the Mercury Prize, which is quite, you know, critically, you know, very, very critically acclaimed, you know, it's kind of decided by a panel of judges and it's very much focused on, you know, the merit of, you know, people's work and everything like that. I guess this is probably like even like one step beyond that. This is like completely about like British songwriting and like composition. Yeah, it's like, it's like and, that in a yeah. beret, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Mercury Prize with a monocle, if you will. Exactly, um, yeah. And maybe which, a wax moustache. Can I go back to Izzy's uh, question there and just say, maybe the monocle is due a comeback as a very alluring item. Um, I think so, because you can pop that out in, in shock as well. So if your easy. partner gets naked before you do, you can show your appreciation by popping the monocle out in a sort of cartoonish <laughs> gesture of shock. <laughs> Because that is what that is what we both do, obviously, famously. We are cartoon characters who react yes, with, yes. I don't know, love hearts appear in our eyes. Um, I do that thing when my heart started. protrudes like three foot from my chest and then <laughs> when it's beating really <laughs> fast. Yeah. <laughs> exactly what happens. Um, back to back to Darwin Novella as we move very swiftly on there. But... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so th- so they've obviously yeah twenty twenties Ivor Novello Awards um, nominees were obviously announced a few I guess, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and uh, guess what? They've announced some winners as well. Uh, the award show the award, the award show happened yeah just like well a couple well, yesterday a couple of days ago, uh, which is lovely stuff. Um, people like uh, Dave, he won a best contemporary song for Black, which obviously I think everyone remembers from the Brit Awards start of this year that like incredibly powerful performance. Um, so well done to mm. him. Uh, <laughs> my guy, Jamie Cullen. Uh, don't stop the music, except when he wins, because he's won again. Um, he's won for uh, the I Age of Anxiety. I don't think you're going to be getting that presenting gig there anytime soon. That's I what just, you were going I, for. I, I just, I, well, you know, you've got to, you've got to try and, you know. Uh, you could say I'm trying to uh, jazz it up, if you will. Um, <laughs> no. No, absolutely not. Uh, I'm here. Um, a range of other awards also given out, yeah, for TV, screen, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, Calvin Harris and Rang and Bowman, they won for, see, and this is where it gets to be, they won for most performed work. Now, does that just sound like, I don't know, they just, they, they, they were plugging away long enough and they didn't give up, and so they just gave them an award for it? I guess. I mean, it's like, like surely you could just play that 4,000 times in your living room. And if you got proof, they'd be like, all right, we could get that next year. Maybe we should. We'll go for it. We need awards. We need, we need, we need, I think we do. We need at least one. While we're in it. Um, Rising Star Award went to uh, Micey, who obviously has been featured in Dork uh, many times. So that's a very lovely little win there. Congratulations. Uh, And I suppose, yeah, I guess a big prize of the evening was the album of the year, which went to Little Sims for Grey Area, which. Has just been. Very, I yeah, mean, that's been such a, good album. a load of plaudits. Obviously, it was nominated for a Mercury uh, last year, and um, yeah, 
think I think that's a very worthy winner, don't you think, Jake? I think that's yeah, very I think it's fair. good. It's good as well with the award shows where something like that wins, and it's like, yeah, God, that came out. You know, it's because I think you get so many albums that you, like so quickly these days that like when the awards come mm. around, you're like, what even happened in the last like year or two years or whatever? And you end up being like that album that came out last it, last week was pretty good, and then something like that wins, and you're like, oh yeah, that's a much better choice. Yeah, people with actual memories have chosen that. Congratulations to the memory holders, if you will. Um, let's have a listen to <laughs> obviously indeed. one of the one of one of the, one of the great tracks from Grey Area um, as Little Sim celebrates in glory. Um, I hope to see an open top bus parade next week. Um, I'll be there. Uh, this is offence. Fuck it, let me get a birthday cake in it. Ain't even my birthday. Cause when I switch, then they wanna say that I'm a bitch. You're not listening. You're not listening. I said it with my chest and I don't care who I offend. Uh huh. Came through swinging at the gate on a mad one, no fox. Step into the kid trying to bring it, I promise you'll have no luck. You sold out for a quick buzz, and honey, you got no love. No less than what I know that I'm worth and I won't budge. Offence as in, as in taking offence, not as in something you would put round the garden. No, no, not a fence. Of, offence. Is yeah, I just of, wanted to offense? clarify because, Jamie, you make everything sound like it could be a carry-on film. And like, obviously... <laughs> what? You know, the, well, hold on, hold on. Offence. No, not... That's, that's you off, know. Off, offence. Off, offence. Offence, right? What? Oh, I wasn't listening, sorry. Yeah, uh, let's move on to some more news. Um, <laughs> congratulations are in order, Jake. Have you heard the, the great news? Young Ed know. Sheeran. Oh, young yes, Ed Sheeran is now a proud father. Uh, he has sired a child, if you will. And uh, it gave birth, yeah, gave birth this like over the past week. So congratulations um, to him. What's uh, first child? What's the child called, uh, Jamie? Oh, I really hoped you weren't going to make me say the name, but I'll give it a go. If you could, you um, could just read the name out. I'm sure it's a pretty normal name. Yeah. So he has um, he has a daughter, and the daughter's name is Lyra Antarctica Seaborn Sheeran. Um, Lovely. Which actually nicely ties into hopefully the launch of his new Mexican restaurant, Las Sheeran, uh, in the next few weeks. So well done to Ed Sheeran there. Um, I think children, that name, Jake. Do you think he had just watched um, his Dark Materials, you know, the Philip Pullman Golden Compass, the one that has a main character called Lyra and a lot of action set in Antarctica with 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 polar bears um i guess or is that so. the arctic i think that is the arctic i also i think like maybe like celebrities need to be taken to one side you know like when you're you know when you have the sex education <laughs> talk at school they need to have a similar one where they're like you know you can just name your child a normal name and you don't have to just like pick random words like like there's no, no you benefit don't have to, do that. to that yeah it's not like if he just called him called his child like lyra because seaborn is his his wife's name girlfriend's name i think so Lyra Seaborn Sheeran, I think everyone mm. would have been like, yeah, Lyra, that's an interesting choice. Nah, just whack it and start to go in there. That's not a name. That's the name of maybe a thing. Maybe it's their favourite continent. It's, it's like their, maybe me. It's their favorite, yeah, but... their favorite. It's their favourite continent, you know? Um, I feel like I that's don't know. maybe it's that's just the like new way of names. Kid and I was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be like, you know, I'm going to call them, uh, I can't actually think of any names that aren't weird now. Uh, <laughs> God, maybe this is what happens. You get so worked up. I'm going to call him Tractor say... because I like tractors. <laughs> but no, that's not a name. You don't have to do that. You just call them a normal word and then tell them that you like tractors when they're old enough to understand. I mean, maybe you just got... I feel like that's a heated debate, child names. Like, I feel like that's like... Do you know what I mean? I can imagine they, they got a yeah, little bit of a that doesn't mean you have to press the barney. nuclear button and destroy the fucking child's life. Antarctica. <laughs> Antarctica. I mean, I... No I know messing. she's going to be rich, so it's probably not going to be an issue. But even so, like, come on. I mean, you know, you know, maybe it's a pulled out of the hat jobby. Not the child, I mean, as in the name. Um, I hope they're not pulling children out. Of, um... Oh, but it's fine to pull the name out of a hat. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, you know, 
Yeah, I think you've right, got you know. a different uh, position on this to me because obviously your name is uh, Jamie Belarus Apple Elephant and Castle Muir. Yeah, it was famously um, named. And I've never after... had to deal with that kind of thing. Yeah, it's famously named after yeah my mum's favourite um, kebab shop is actually in uh, Elephant and Castle. Um, so that's that's yep, the and connection. And her favourite Eastern European dictatorship is Belarus. And her favourite t- fruit can't is stop an talking apple. Talking about it, she can't stop talking about it all the time. It's really <laughs> awkward when you have to try and write it all out for like a form. But you know, apart from that, mm. um, I've managed to get away with it my whole life. <laughs> what am I like? Yes. Um, I guess. I guess this, you know, now this is like the next step of his life. You know, maybe he'll, maybe he'll put the brakes on music. You never know. Um, mm. Maybe he'll calm down a bit, um, or he'll just go out and make more money. I mean, who knows? Yeah, I think probably the second one. Probably the second one. Um, at least I suppose he didn't name the child um, after someone who um, played the fiddle in an Irish band and. Fell in love with an Englishman. Um, that would have been that would have been awkward. Um, well, I, I think guess the issue exactly... then is that the issue then is that I mean he'd be naming them after a after a Galway girl, wouldn't he? Rather than a Antarctican girl. I I I guess he would. And how would that sound? Let's have a listen. She played the fiddle in an Irish band, but she fell in love with an Englishman. Kissed her on the neck and then I took her by the hands and said, baby, I just want to dance. My pretty little Galway girl. I do enjoy really that make worse. people listen to stuff like this. Like, yeah, that joke get worse didn't really week. deserve a whole song, and yet we played it. No, and yet we Moved did. swiftly, um, I would say. Yeah, that was that was that was cool, way girl. That was cool, way girl. And Jake, well, I've got some, some news, news for you. Yes, yeah, I have. I've got some news for you. I've got some news for you. Um, okay, I've got two options here. Do you want mm. the? Um, do you want the weird news? Or the weird American news. Ooh, like across the pond. Well, Ooh. I guess. I guess what's America doing, and then we can compare with here. So, what's the weird American news? What's happened in America now? Anything weird? Okay. So, Snoop Doggy Dog. Um, are you aware of, of him? Of course. Uh, the Rapper, famous uh, canine, star, canine mascot mogul. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Atta, um, famously as well. Yes, yeah. of course. Yes, yes. Oh, I mean, he only ever plays mm. himself. But uh, <laughs> he is he is launching um, a brand of gin. Nice. Uh, I see yep, what he's done there. Uh, yeah, because uh, of gin and uh, juice, obviously. Uh, but he's gone one further because he doesn't just want the link to gin and juice. It's a it's an indigo gi- gi- uh, indigo gin, but he's called it Indogo instead. Ah. Uh. Because he's a dog. But I don't think he realises that makes it sound like he's trying to do the meme about doggos. Like, oh. it's a gin in dog, And that's very old man, isn't it? So, um... Yeah. But also, like, have we ever thought that maybe, just maybe, like, this year is very much starting to take its toll now? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's Snoop true. Dogg's like, oh, do you know what? I'll just release a gin now. Um, and I'm not saying yeah, it's going to be bad gin. I'm sure it's infused. okay gin. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it'll be. I'm sure it'll be okay, gin. But at the same time, you know, we've got gin, haven't we already? I don't think we need. I don't think we need another gin. That's all. All I'm saying, Snoop Dogg. Um, but you know, he can do what he wants to do. You know, I wonder if it's going to be he... like as bad as um, what's it? Um, do you remember? Um, oh God, what was it? When Marilyn Manson released um, his own absinthe. Oh, they've all done. They've all done it, haven't they? Uh, ACDC yeah, yeah, yeah. released a range of wines, and they didn't even call the rosé a whole lot of rosé. So, what's the point? <sighs> For fuck's sake. Um, anyway, Snoop Dogg's apparently... got a yeah. fedora on in the picture. It looks like amazing. Yeah, a wide-brimmed hat, anyway, and a turtleneck. Um, mm. And he's got seven botanicals uh, infused with the strawberry flavour, and it's been distilled five times. It's made with no added sugar, which I think is something we can all get on board with. Unlike Marilyn Manson's absinthe. Yeah, we can pass on Mansymph. 
Jesus. I guess the Just Eat money really is running out, isn't it, for Snoop? Jesus. Heavens yeah, above. already. Um, maybe he sunk already. all that money into the gin. Yeah. Maybe he sunk it all into Just Eat. Maybe he just ordered a shitload of pizza tonight. <laughs> maybe. Um, maybe. Maybe. Um, what's the what's the weird UK news you've got? Ah, uh, yes, the UK news. So, so you know, sports team released that album a while back. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I've heard Which about these came, guys. Came with four hundred and thirty-seven different variants, um, <laughs> eighteen thousand different colours of vinyl, four hundred cassettes, uh, oh, a yeah, the whole download. Shebang. So it's all been done. You know, you wouldn't want to milk that anymore, would you? That would just seem sort of crass, wouldn't it? I would have thought so, yeah. Maybe it's a bit too far. Yeah. Um, You'd think wait, so. what's happened now? But for Record Store Day, sports team are re-releasing Deep Down Happy on three picture discs, each one of which has uh, two members of the band's faces on it. <laughs> so it's a white, it's, it looks like it's a white picture disc, and then it's just got a badly cut out black and white photo of the band. Um, so there's one with Alex and Rob on it. Uh, I believe. Uh, one second, I've Just lost the. Uh, face on it. I've lost Fuck the list, it. and I want to get this right. I want to get this right. Um, oh please, yeah, because because what we we're held to such high journalistic standards. We are bit. right. So there's <laughs> there's Alex and Rob, the bespectacled yeah. Rob Nags on one side, and uh, greasy Alex Rice on the other, and then greasy. there's um, Al and Ollie on the second one. Um, Lovely. Who I kind of That's think nice. of as the, you know, the the linchpins of the band, the ones that actually get stuff done. You know, yeah, um, the no nonsense <laughs> grouping, um, and then on the other on the other one, there's uh, Henry and Ben, who are kind of the the mascots of the band. I feel um, down there. So yeah, don't worry. Last time I saw them, I asked if they listened to this, and they didn't even know it existed. So we can say whatever we want, to be honest, as long as no one passes Amazing. it on to them. Yeah, it's been a pleasure giving them so much support. And with that in mind, mm. shall we listen to a track of this? <laughs> what a planning! <laughs> Yeah, why oh, not? Uh, we played a lot by them, but I think um, they are really, they're likely to be um, led up a hill with a crown of thorns on the head and crucified for this l- latest foray into vinyl. So for that reason, I think we should play Stations of the Cross. Crucified. That's where we are. <laughs> That's what the stations of the cross are. God, did we ever get Bible school, Jamie? Jesus. Crucifying band members. Why not? We did ever a song about. School. We did a song about Jesus being chosen by the mob at school. Um. And that's why I remember that nice. the criminal who was who's who was freed was called Barabbas, and Jesus was the one that was found guilty. Nice. And that's I what really Barabbas useful. Is up to now. Yeah, and that's really useful for your everyday life, um, which is, is great, yes, isn't it? Of course, yeah. it really is. Um, so I drop anyway, in, I've got one on more from bit. the Bible. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got one, one more final bit of news little pinkle of news before yeah, yeah, a big got, reveal. Because, but yeah, because because famously we've got um, we've got a, I've got a friend of the magazine knocking at the door, which we you know we'll talk about in a sec. But let's talk about uh, a collab, if you will, a little one-two, bread and butter, cheese and tomato. Egg and Cress. Barabbas and being Bake. freed. <laughs> that famous collaboration. Uh, we're talking yeah. about uh, Bring Me the Horizon uh, and Youngblood, who have teamed up on a brand new track, and it's called Obey. So, Obey. Um, like this is like the second. Brand. Uh, do you know what? I'm surprised they haven't done some, uh, some merch here, because you know, so if mm. anyone had, the, had, had their head on, they would have been able to do that. Um, Obey well, is like the Jamie, second track. We've been busy with the radio, so I guess you know no one's thought of it. <laughs> no one's asked us either, which is obviously very alarming. No, which is yeah, we've got a mailbag and everything. Fuck's sake! <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ! Um, yeah, so they teamed up. This is Bring Me the Horizon, like second track. Like they came out with like Parasite Eve, didn't they earlier in the year? And mm-hmm. uh, this yep. is like yeah, the next kind of one, obviously with Young Blood on it as well. Young Blood doing 
a shitload of stuff. Um, the video is pretty mad because it's like big monsters like roaming about in London. And they it's a like, lot, like, isn't like it? it's huge, right? And what I love is there's a note here that says the video was shot in London, um, as if those monsters were real. <laughs> Um, yeah, so as we, if they we, were... we shipped the monsters in from abroad, but it was all shot on location. So what you're seeing is, is, um, is the real London, um, obviously <laughs> with a bit of touching up done, but I think you'll find it very accurate. Yeah, uh, here's the song. <laughs> it's very accurate. Uh, it's another like heavy one, like really, really heavy one. And I guess like it feels like Bring Me are going in a certain direction, which uh, yeah, it feels quite exciting. It feels quite interesting, and like it feels like they're nice kind of that redialed push, in. Push, you know. New yeah. tracks, yeah, new, yeah. new new vibe, all going towards the same same sort of end goal. Plus, I think it's a really interesting and good choice to have Young Blood on there as well. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I I do I like this song a lot. Yeah, and it feels like it it just ties really nicely um, between the two of them. So yeah, a really really mm. uh, yeah statement of intent, if you will. Um, Young Blood obviously um, was also announced this week uh, that he's playing Reading and Leeds. Uh, another little announcement. Oh, another man for playing... Reading and Leeds. Great, perfect. <laughs> We need him. We need him desperately. Bust him uh, in. He's gonna be... <laughs> just bust him in. Just give him a shout. Like, like Melvin, mm-hmm. if you're listening, I'm free. If you just want to book another bloke, stick me on somewhere. <laughs> if you want to book him on the Radio 1 dance stage, he's here. And <laughs> he's ready to play Swedish House Mafia back to front. Uh, it's what the people want. It's what the people it is, want. It is. That and Wankel, um... man. <laughs> Wank them away and listen to this new one. Um, we'll, we'll be joined just after this uh, by Kieran from Circa Waves, uh, an ultimate friend of the magazine. He may have the ultimate badge of the friend of the magazine badges, which we don't send out to anyone because we don't have and we don't create because we they're can't like the afford Nando's black that budget. Card, but they just they just give you free access to us, and no one really wants it. But Kieran accepted yeah. one, so uh, and he he's got a he's got us for oh. A good few minutes after this track, all to himself. <laughs> we'll be we'll be joined by Kieran uh, from Circuit after this. But yeah, this is a this is a bay. Bring the horizon, young bloods and monsters in London. Lovely, lovely music. And um, and Jake, look who we are joined by now. Uh, joined I'm by um, you're, you're looking, you're looking, and we've and we've found it is um, it is friend of the magazine. I think actually, I think actually, Kieran, you were actually one of the first people who got the friend of the magazine title um, that we hand out is to that... certain people. Yeah, you 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 were one of the first to get it. Um, you don't have anything physical. Um, I was going to say you've not like sent like a bad like a blue pizza style badge or anything. So no, we just did. kind it just of got lost. We had there was a hamper and everything, but it, it didn't get delivered. Um, just you know, bloody postal service. But oh, what are they like? What? Mm. <laughs> but yeah, it was very um, expensive, very tasteful. Um, some really nice stuff in there. So you know, you're welcome. Yeah. No. Well, thanks very much. You know, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> It it's is, the fault that yeah. counts. Uh, we we are joined by Kieran from Circle Waves. Kieran, how how are you doing? How are things? How are you keeping? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm great, mate. Yeah, just um, my cat's looking at me like really angry because I've not fed him in um, <laughs> a while. Sorry, in a care. while? How long's a while? Uh, well, like since this morning. Um, okay, that's uh, yeah, yeah, not not like a couple of weeks. Oh shit, I've got a cat. No, oh god. No. <laughs> No, I don't talk to my animals. It's not. It's not within me. Um, no, it's not. It's not uh, my yeah, thing. I'm, good. I'm just. Uh, I'm drinking. A, you know, a small beer. You know, like Ooh. so. I feel like I'm on holiday, continental sort of Europe vibe. Oh, nice. And, yeah, uh, I feel the same. If you have a small, a small one. Feels like you know. I like that's the, it. Yeah, the small ones. Of, you know, because that's what you drink when you're abroad. So that's what I drink at home, just to give me that holiday feeling all year round. No, I mean, Plus, then when you're abroad, right, yeah. it feels like you've drunk about thirty beers because they're so small. You feel like a <laughs> Superman. <laughs> that's exactly, exactly what happens. That's exactly what happens. Jesus, I'm getting a real insight into everyone's holiday here. 
just drinking the little uh, just the little guys just rocking away. Oh god. But I'm so, only in Skegness as well. <laughs> that real tropical <laughs> feeling. Oh yeah. god. God. Um but yeah, I have, obviously, you know, how how has the past few months been for you? Because obviously, you know, everyone's kind of, you know, going through a bit of a weird, weird old time. But how have you been? Have you kept yourself busy? That's the most important thing. Uh, yeah, you know, well, I mean, as a ba- like as a sort of, um, you know, people who whose living it is to play live music, it's been very strange, <laughs> as you can imagine. A little bit. Because we, we kind of we kind of stopped in the middle of our album campaign. We hadn't actually done the album tour or anything, so mm. that missing all of that was quite mad. Um, and then it's just been it's just carried on going, hasn't it? It's like that sort of mm. that awful party that you can't leave and you really want to. Um, <laughs> you're stuck so at the side it's like please let, let us yeah. I, I can't no yeah no 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 I can't do it exactly <laughs> well, I don't want another here. tiny beer please <laughs> for the love of God go. <laughs> listen if there was tiny beers I'd stay at the party forever that's what I look for <laughs> the problem is, is they were gone but we've we've just um We've just basically been, well, I've been writing loads. I sort of write a lot and I write for other people and I just keep myself, I've got a little studio and I've got, you know, more time on my hands than usual. So I'm just making a ton of music, like <laughs> like weird, mad shit, like dance music and heavy music. And um, I've pretty much sort of done another 20 Circa Waves tunes. So whether they'll make it onto another album or what i don't know just productive um, productive but, you know god I, I love it i make i make a few tunes a week i can't help myself <laughs> i'm really intrigued about what the dance music uh the dance music uh you're you're making is are we is looking good are we looking acid house or <laughs> it's exceptional some people have called it exceptional <laughs> is that the cat that has said some that people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? It's okay. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning as I go. Essentially, dance music is just, it's like indie music or pop music, but you just put like a four to the floor, massive kick on it, and you're, and that's it. And that's so, it. And you're there, aren't you? At that point, you're, you're actually all there. Like you're, 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 you're through the gates. But I do, I do love like, um, I like camel fat quite a lot and stuff like that. So I'm a fan of the pumping tunes, bit, like the darker dance. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Love a pop. Yeah, you, you must have heard the new one they've got with uh, with uh, Yanis from Foles. So have you been like that? That's yeah. the future. You're just going to chime in on on some dance remixes, you know? And, and don't get me wrong, why not? Why not? Pile in. I think so. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I like to be involved in all aspects of of genre. So you know, I'm I'm open to a to whatever, man. Mm. Plus, good to be doing a bit of everything in case you know, like indie does drop off a cliff, and then you're like, well, I can do dance <laughs> too. I'm around. <laughs> I got other genres thought, on my sleeve. I thought Indy dropped off a cliff like 2010. Is that not? <laughs> There's I always thought, another cliff. We... There's always another cliff. <laughs> We're just like the embers, slightly keep it going. Just yeah. Well, I guess maybe away. there's a strong gust of wind and it finally blows out. <laughs> you'll, you'll be on the dance there's, train. There's well more. There's loads more guitars in like pop music at the moment. I've noticed like mm. that. Uh, Who's that bloke? Uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he just sounds like Blink One Eight Two. Like that's what you know. what I mean, like I think, <laughs> um, I think uh, pop and rap is is starting to fall back in love with the guitar. So it, they're smuggling you know. them back in, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And then it's they're not yeah. into it, and then you listen to it. And there you go. That's it. They all want to sound like. Honestly, like I write some stuff with like people who want to make pop music and every pop artist wants to sound like Tame Impala. <laughs> like you get everyone. Yeah, they just want to sound like Tame Impala and Arctic Monkeys and you're like, fuck it hell, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you can just, just smuggle in like you just smuggle in like old Arctic Monkey songs in and just be like, have you thought about doing this? And then you just start like just slowly yeah. playing like when the sun goes down. You're just like, maybe, maybe. Do you want it? Do you want it? You know? Yeah, oh, this is uh, this is one I whipped up earlier, but I'm happy for you guys to have it for a small yeah, yeah, fee. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, uh, Alex Turner's fine. He, you know, he doesn't he doesn't need another credit. He's all good. He's living his life. He's fine. Just slip him in, make that money, uh, if you will, if you will. Uh, but in your in your in your new music in your new music run that you've had in terms of writing, uh, you got a new one out with uh, with another friend of the magazine, Alfie Templeman, Lemonade. Uh, how how did that all come together with Alfie? Have you have you met Alfie before? 
We've not met it in the physical world, uh, only online oh. uh, through the internet. Um, so the yeah, I, we just like chatted on Instagram a little bit about our you know mutual love for various artists, and um, I think we were going to write together anyway at some point. You mm. know, for, for whatever reason, might be for his stuff or just like general stuff. Um, and then I had this track, and it kind of felt like it would fit his. He's got this like laid back thing to the way he sings, which I thought was perfect for mm. Lemonade. So I asked him if he'd be up for singing. And I literally sent it to him, and within like 10 minutes, he'd sent me back his bit. So <laughs> efficient. He's, um, efficient. Like, you can't fool he's him. He's extremely efficient. He's, yeah, no, he's so talented, man. It's ridiculous. If I was as good as he was at 17, I think I'd be a millionaire right now. That's the terrifying thing, which isn't I'm definitely it? Definitely not. It, it's, <laughs> just to clarify, just to clarify. <laughs> Not a millionaire, <laughs> please. Uh, I mean, it is no. it is terrifying that he is. You know, he is. I mean, Jacob had this conversation a lot that he is he is a child and he is um, achieving more <laughs> in our lives than 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 we could ever come close to. Um, a real sobering, my sobering only reminder. Solace, my own, my only solace is that I can go to the pub legally and he can't. So as soon as he turns eighteen, <laughs> that's it. That's He's the only got thing you've got. that I've got, plus all the talent. <laughs> All I've got is the ability to walk into the off license and buy four cans and not not have to pretend I'm an age that I'm not. <laughs> a real dark existence. Well, you know, he's got like he's got like a beard and stuff though, so he can probably he's probably got more chance of getting served than me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> he's even taken the... that away from us. <laughs> I know he's got a better beard than me, and he's a lot younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> just terrifying, <laughs> terrifying. Um, and it must be like, I mean, it's quite interesting. Like, were you just like, right, let's just get this tune out now? Because like, obviously, yeah, it wasn't too long ago, obviously, that um, Sad Happy came out. And I guess you're like, I mean, yeah, you're just like, right, we might as well just get this out now. Like, we've, we've done the song and let's not muck about and let's just put a song out. Was that kind of the thinking you like, let's just get it out right away? Yeah, well, I think like the sort of, um, we knew that we wouldn't be playing live for quite a while and... Mm. I've sort of, you know, I started producing stuff at home to a good level. So we basically just got people, well, I got the band to send in their parts from home, like the guitar part. Joe sent through an email, Sam did an email, Colin the same. And, mm. and I just sort of put it all together. And then we got this absolute genius of a mixer called Dan Gretsch to mix it. Mm. Um, so it, it's quite that, that way of doing it made it really easy to do without having to actually meet up and stuff. And so it was. It felt like uh, it felt like a really good tune just to put out in the sense that it didn't it doesn't really sound like normal circle waves. Mm. You know, it's quite sort of laid back and stuff. We just thought like you know we we could wait till we're touring again to put new music out, but like who the fuck knows when we're going to be touring again? So um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like it, let's just let's just get out the door now. <laughs> I think we wanted to be like a band again. You know, we, mm. we sort of we were being at home doing nothing and and you do you do miss it loads, you know, that whole thing of like being, having music out and, you know, people talking about your band and stuff is, mm. you obviously you get addicted to that over the years that like you, you make music. So like, we just wanted to feel like we were in, in this, in like the scene again and people still remembered who we were. Yeah. Yeah. You were like, yeah. Get us out Plus, there's, there's such a, there's such a hunger for it at the moment as well. Cause it's been so many months of album delays and tour delays and that. I think people are just so, gasping for new music but anytime anything's released it gets so much attention because people are like oh my god something new and good from a band i like you know <laughs> yeah i think that like i think with the way music is consumed nowadays anyway everyone wants like as soon as you record out people are like oh when's the next thing out and you're like god i've just mm. spent a year <laughs> mate you know just pay for it. <laughs> leave it out mate give us give us a little bit of time <laughs> Just enjoy it, will you? Just let me have a sleep. But, no, there you go. <laughs> that's cool. No, that's good. And I guess as well, it's like, it, I, like this is the time when people have got that time maybe to listen almost more to more music. Like, have you have you found yourself listening to more music right now than you probably usually would, or have you found yourself like just been d like deep in just writing yourself? I definitely make a lot more music. I probably listen to a, a similar amount. I mean, I. I probably I walk a lot more than I used to. Yeah, obviously, I think everyone's sort of like walking more now. Yeah, that's definitely a you thing. Because you just want to go out, get out. Yeah, you, know, you get out the house and you, know, you need to like clear your head and stuff. So I listen to a lot more 
music that way and I run a lot as well. But to be honest, I, I, this is really bad. But <laughs> yeah. I generally... I generally just listen to like my own music. <laughs> Mate, why not? Oh, why, no. not? Why, not? why not? You can't. Why not? Why not? Why not? Jamie, I'm not there. Uh, we uh, cannot condone that behaviour. Uh, <laughs> not like not like music that's out in the world that people know. I'm talking like because I'm mixing and recording stuff oh, every day. Okay. On my own. I, I'm, I'm thinking you're sticking like best of Circle Waves on the Spotify. No. <laughs> Circle Waves Radio. <laughs> Having a walk and being like, this I'm is, this great is great. of all of my own songs. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. No, I don't do that. I'm not quite there yet. Maybe one day. Yeah, give it, give it like fifteen it's years. Ge- it's generally just listening. <laughs> it's just like listening to the new, new stuff and recording and and putting it together and trying to like figure out like arrangements and where stuff should go on like you know next the next album and all that. So that's more. It's kind yeah, of that's, my process. That's okay. That's 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 more professional. Like that's <laughs> yeah. Like the idea yeah. you stick the essentials on. You're just like, oh, do you know what? This actually is a really good song. Just like someone walks by you and you're well, just like, again, what am I listening to? Uh, now and again, I do put on like one of our albums. Just, just like, like maybe once, once a year, I'll listen to like one of our old albums and be like, oh yeah, that was, that that was, was good. quite good. That, or I'll be like, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> on that bit. Just turn it off. You're just like, oh god, what have I done here? God, that's just some of my decision making has been awful but you know there you go that's <laughs> a real reflection you should listen to this <laughs> podcast mate i think we've probably made some worse decisions than you yeah we, I, uh, but i'm not <laughs> listening back to them once a year so <laughs> yeah to be honest we've only been about for like a few months like uh yeah there's there's i think there's worse here than there is at any point in your career so i think you're good in that point you're, you're clear you're clear well wait yeah wait till like two years time and you'll listen back to your early podcast and you'll be like oh no <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm like now. That's how I feel about something I said 10 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Oh, you're done for, mate. Fair enough. Go for it. Fucked. <laughs> oh, God. Um, talking, you know, you know, makes you ask questions, doesn't it? And talking of questions, um, Kieran, we... What a segue. Well, it's, you know, well, professionals here. You know, we try. Um, we, um, we caught up with a young Alfie Templeman only, only a few short days ago. And we said to him, oh, um... Oh, Kieran's going to be on the Kieran's going to be on the show uh, next week, and he's went. Wait a minute, I've got some questions, um, and he, and he's 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 phoned them in. Uh, so what we're going to do? It, we're we're going to cut to Alfie Templeman now, um, who has got uh, he's got three questions for you, and he just likes to know your answers to it. So um, so Alfie, if you're if you're there, uh, come in. What is your first question? Hello, Kieran. I hope today finds you well. I have three questions for you. Lemonade or beer? <laughs> so, lemonade or beer? Lemonade or beer? Um, I haven't drunk lemonade in about two years. So, I'm definitely going to have to go for beer. So, 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 beer. so, so, so just, to, just to clarify that, you've, um, you've made a song called Lemonade, but you haven't had lemonade in a couple of years. Is that correct? <laughs> This is correct. Yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's all a huge ruse. <sighs> We're really um, seeing behind the curtain. Well, lemonade is like the uh, like the emblem of um, you know the thing that like the boredom in people's minds almost like that sort of. Um, mm, the, yeah, that's nice. what it symbolizes. It, symbol- it symbolizes the thing that you know. It, it symbolizes like a mundane. Yes, lemonade to me is a relatively mundane drink. Fair play. Fair play. Mundane drink. Jake, Jake, what do you think? Lemonade or beer for you? I think I'd go with beer. Um, I only drink lemonade if I've had too much caffeine in the day and want a soft drink because it's one of the only <laughs> decent drinks without caffeine in it, isn't it, really? Um, I mean... But that's... The fact that it is it is behind all all other drinks and only drunk but on the basis of what it doesn't have in it would imply that I'm going with beer, to be honest with you. It's fair. It's fair, fair answer. Fair answers. There's your answer, Alfie. Um, Alf, coming back to Alfie, you, we have a second question. Uh, hit us with your second question. Lemon cheesecake or chocolate fudge cake? <laughs> <laughs> the real picks there. There's, these are the key questions uh, Alfie wants to know. He was desperate to ask them of you. Um, <laughs> but he was too scared to ask you himself. He, he said, can, can I ask via you guys? I'm worried about his reaction. You know? <laughs> That's exactly what it was. I'm about my eating habits. <laughs> Um, 
I for I'm I'm a <clears throat> sorry. I'm getting emotional with this question. <laughs> um, Memories. I I think I will probably you know I'm I'm partial to to both cheesecake and chocolate cake, but I think if I you know it, put in front of me, the chocolate. Chocolate, the chocolate. You've gone for the chocolate. I mean, that depends. Before it depends on like your mood. Is that what you're thinking? No, whatever the meal is before it. Ah, right. So you like, cake. pace it out. So a bit. if you've just eaten like a, a basket of lemons, you're not going to want the lemon cheesecake. Um, exactly. Just the classic, classic dinner <laughs> choice of a basket of lemons. <laughs> the real classic if one. You really happy. If you've had like a big steak, you might you might want to like clean your palate at the end with something fresh. So like a lemon cheesecake might be good for that. Mm, mm. that you know there's I mean? logic. There's logic in you. There's logic in the answer here. You've you've it, it feels like it's been sprung on you, but you, you've got logic behind it, and I rate that. I rate that a lot. Very very smart. I eat a lot of food, so ready. you're an expert. You're an expert, if you will. Um, but there's your, there's there's your answer. Oh, yeah. There's your answer, Alfie. Um, and what about got... you, Jamie? What's your what's your favourite of the lemon lemon or chocolate fudge cake? Um, I think I think I'm a fudge cake kind of guy. I'll be honest with you. Um, uh, when I eat food, I kind of eat to kind of like really like put myself out. As in, like when I eat, I want to like knock myself out with food rather than enjoy it necessarily. Um, well, any time any time I've been with you and eaten, you haven't eaten. So I get the feeling you're kind of like a snake in that once a month you just have the biggest meal known to man, and that just tides you over that's forevermore. Exa- that's exactly what I do, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just engulf stuff. Um, it's, yeah. <laughs> Wait, so do you, do you two go out and you just watch Jamie eat you don't Jamie doesn't eat food, but you eat food? No, so what happens is we'll go somewhere. Well, so we'll be at the pub or something, and we'll be like, "Oh, we're, you know, we've been here a while. Let's get some food." And Jamie will go, "I think I'm all right at the moment," and then it'll be like six hours later, and he'll still somehow be all right. It's not like we're in like a fancy restaurant, and we've just brought Jamie along to look at us. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not, I'm not warned about the food eating relationship. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's a table a... for two, but just one set of cutlery, please. Jamie's just going to watch. Uh... <laughs> I just, I just stare and I go, "You enjoying that?" And it's like, "Yeah, yeah, I am." Yeah, Is that, that looks a... good, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it. that chocolate fudge cake? Oh, my <laughs> favourite. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, it's a very you odd guys. relationship we have. My God. Um, and we have one more. We have one last question um, from Alfie. So we're going to cut to him. I've been, I've been told that this is a bit of a rogue one. Um, Alfie, the the last question, please. And finally, my last question is, would you rather squeeze lemon juice into your eyes or kick a cactus barefoot? So that is, that is lemon juice in your eyes or kicking a cactus barefoot. Uh, both not pleasant. Um, I've done both, so I know the, I know <laughs> the feeling. Sorry, hold on, what have you done both? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> a wild time yeah well when i was when i was younger one of my one of my jobs used to be um to kick cactuses out the ground by my mum and dad's um <laughs> <Sorry>. barefoot so and then when you got a bit older one of your jobs was to dispose of lemon juice by pouring it into your eyes yeah. <laughs> it was yes it was yeah to test the affinity so you yeah, know, of course. We, yeah yeah <laughs> classic childhood jobs those <laughs> i did i don't know why would you i i I'm not sure what I would choose on that one. But I imagine that um, both could be da- like fatally, well, not fatally, sorry, uh, like damage your your body for the rest of your life. So, mm. um, feet or eyes, I suppose that's the that's the the way up, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. The real the real question is: would you would you rather lose the ability that your feet give you, or lose the the power of sight? Um, <sighs> oh, uh, so, so for me, I'd probably lose my feet. Yeah, yeah, I'd kick the cactus all day, every day, rather than the uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Lemon juice one all day, all day, <laughs> yeah, 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 all day. Yeah. <laughs> Not even if I was forced to choose between the two, it just sounds like a good day. Just a bit of punting, <laughs> a bit of punting. Um, yeah, <laughs> get your anger out, you know. Get get rid of it for the love of God. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, Alfie Templeman. We'll we'll let you go off and do whatever you want to do now. Um, and while, whilst he's wandering off, let's uh, let's have a listen to this. Is uh, to uh, to the track we've been talking about all this time. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is Circle Waves. Uh, Lemonade featuring Alfie Templeman. Lemonade 
Um, famously, not in your eyes. Um, that's a no-go. Um, clear rid of that. Clear rid of that. Don't put it in your eyes. For the love of God, please. Please. Have like, you ever considered doing a sort of pub- public service announcement kind of thing, Kieran? You know? Like, lemonade. Don't put it in your eyes. <laughs> That's a t-shirt. No, just like a I've not, sort no, of I've cre- not thought of that. You know, like a Christmas advert, you know, like they do, or children in need, they do that kind of thing. You could have a sort of, uh, you could corner the market on that one. Yes. Yeah, no, well, I mean, I'll definitely put it forward to the label and see what they think. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think they'll go for it. I think they will. I think they will. invest. They'll invest a lot of, like, invest heavily in it. <laughs> yeah, they I will. can see yeah. it. <laughs> in order for you this can to take go it ahead. away from music entirely. <laughs> Just into public service announcements. You'll be doing like the tr- like the, the tube yeah. next. Just uh, just you know, keep people mind the gap and don't pour lemon juice in your eyes. For the love of God, <laughs> please. Kieran, <laughs> um, we um, we 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 we've got a little game for you now. Um, our our creative minds have come up with this one, which um, yeah, we we've really <coughs> helpfully titled um the sad happy game, um. A lot has gone into that, clearly. Um, You know, we give it a go. Um, And what we're going to do is we are, we're going to just, you know, we've we've got a a range of topics, a range of of different objects, things. And we just want to know if that makes you sad or happy. And and just just wondering, you know, why? Why is that the case? Um, Okay. So, you know, just getting a little bit of insight into, you know, what makes you tick or what doesn't. Famously, it was like a therapy session in a way. Yeah, yeah. It, oh, yeah. It gets very deep. It's gonna, yeah. <laughs> it does. That's why we're here. Um, we're we're like the therapy nobody wants. Um, but hey ho. <laughs> Sign off first. Um, so sad or happy? Um, clowns. How do you feel about clowns? Um, indifferent. <laughs> Well, that's not, that's not the name of the album. If you wanted that as an option, you should have put that in the album title, all right? What a sad, happy, indifferent. Yeah. Because <laughs> you knew this was coming. <laughs> like... well, no, oh. You know, I feel like um, I, a lot of people are terrified. I sort of, you know, when you watch It when you're like a kid and like yeah. it sort of it freaks a lot of people out, but I, never, I was never that bothered by it. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm like... I'm easy, I, you know. The the you know they have the ability to scare me, but uh, generally they they make me feel like let's go with happy. Yeah, I feel happy. relatively happy when I. Say that. Yeah, but yeah. I would never ask someone to get me a clown for a birthday. <laughs> Clear that. Just so, would you say that the treatment of clowns makes you sad because people are also anti-clown? I would actually, yeah, nah. yeah. That's I should start doing public service announcements. <laughs> for people to be clownless. For the clown community. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming out the mini. Just Those like, guys work Whoa. hard. They do. They work, <laughs> work very hard. Like, very, very hard. They've got, someone's got to do it. I like how you say that. I've never, I don't think I've ever met a clown. How do you know how hard they work? <laughs> well, you did. You never bothered to ask, did you? You've seen a lot of them. I didn't. It's true. It's so true. You watch them put the God. balloons together. You never ask I'm them how they're doing, do you? We don't. We don't, actually. Oh, God. Real You're problem. part of the problem. Yeah, yeah. I am, dude. I am the problem, I think. You Just are the, the whole problem. You are the problem. Yeah. Oh, well, God. Clown, moving on. Clown, moving clown on from happy. clowns, then. Um, second one uh, is um, uh, flying onto a stage in a harness. Does that I- the idea of that make you sad or happy? Oh, no. That makes me upset. That makes me sad. <laughs> You would never do that. You never uh, fly in. No, because the, that never goes well, does it? <laughs> There's all, you, anyone who's ever done that has, has definitely fallen off. Like, I think Pink used to do it, didn't she? And she had that yeah. harness where she flew over the crowd. Yeah. And yeah. she flew out of it once. Oh, yeah, she did. No one ever. <laughs> no one ever. That that you guaranteed to fall out. It's designed to fall out. It's not. You're not meant to do it. Pack it in. Stop. I think People I think the worst it. thing is is if it if it goes well and they get onto the stage, they then have that bit where they have to be like unclipped, and it always yeah. gets really awkward. And they, they, if you're at a festival, you know they've got those big screens. They don't look away for that bit. There's just these huge screens showing someone awkwardly being like helped out of a harness, and it's like, well, that's ruined the majesty, hasn't it? The majesty <laughs> of flight has been ruined. 
<laughs> the style. Of I it. think um, oh. you mm. should just do like. Uh, do you know Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam? He used yeah. to. Um, he used to climb the stage and like climb outwards above the crowd on like whatever sort of trusses there were, mm. and that was that was dead cool because he didn't have a harness and like he knew that if he fell, he was dead. <laughs> um, and that's way cooler. Flouting flouting health and safety, um, I agree, is actually much cooler because yeah, if you're in a harness, it's like oh, you're just flying about, aren't you? You know, you're just going here and there. Yeah, um, I, yeah. sad, understandably so. Um, Jake, have you got? Um, have you got? Have you, have yeah, you got one here? Oh, I've got reams of them, mate. Um, <laughs> but let's go with uh, when dogs fall over. Does that make you sad or happy? No, it makes me very, <laughs> very happy. <laughs> I, uh, I know. It, <laughs> I know it makes me happy because as soon as you said it, I started laughing in my head. Um, <laughs> Amazing. No, I. No, I find it hilarious. I mean, it would be good if dogs had that thing, you know, that goats have where if you scream at them, they fall over. Yeah, 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 um, yeah that would be yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. That would make it worthwhile that, as well. It's like a type of... If there was a breed of dog where I could shout at it and it would fall over, I would buy like 10 of them and just have them around the house. <laughs> All in different rooms, just ready. Just yeah, come out the room, door and scream. Three, one in the bathroom. <laughs> Oh my, imagine how much better your life would be if that was you were just knocking around the house. I'd never get anything done though. That's the yeah, issue. Yeah, I'd never get anything apart. done. We'd fall apart very quickly. It'd be, it'd be absolutely amazing. It would be good. A, a very strong, a very strong happy there uh, for when dogs fall over. Mm. Oh yeah. god! I do. I mean, just for the record, I do. I do like dogs, and I've owned, I've owned many. So you know, yeah, fair play. But also, big, big fan of dogs. But also hilarious at the same time. Oh. They're just funny, aren't they? Dogs are funny. Just knock around. They are good. Just yeah. knock around. Um, oh, Jake, dogs okay. funny. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are funny. Oh, God. Okay, right. Next one. Moving swiftly onwards. Uh, these have all been submitted by dork writers, by the way, so they're not all our invention. Uh, so if any of them you think are absolutely shit, just assume they're not mine. Uh, <laughs> okay. Checking the weather when you're heading out. Yeah. <laughs> They could be yours, you know. <laughs> anyway, checking the weather when you're heading out while wearing a thick jumper and finding out it's actually t-shirt weather. Uh, see, not one of us. See, what, see, yeah, um, that's not one of us. It's not one of us. It's not one of us. <laughs> just to say, just to clear, clarify, um, we're not nearly that witty. No, no, we're close. Um, I well, I'm I'm from the north, so we we tend to never really wear jumpers anyway, even if it's freezing. We just. Just rock it, rock up with our t-shirts on, <laughs> just crack um, on, and just just feel dead cold all the time. <laughs> so it's, it's what I like about that is that you've admitted you feel the cold. Normally, northern people are like, "No, I, I don't feel it." Whereas you're like, "No, I'm always freezing. I just don't wear a jumper." Oh, I'm well aware. Of, yeah, I'm very aware of it. I, I just train you, train yourself not to talk about it. <laughs> Back not moments. even not to feel it, just not to talk about it. <laughs> you know, just, just don't talk about it. You know, when you were saying this was going to be like therapy, well, th- th- this is the question where it has opened up, hasn't it? We just don't talk about it. We just don't talk about the temperature anymore. Just put a jumper on. <laughs> Here and come, just put a jumper on. Keep yourself well, safe. I think the thing is, like, if there, was, if there was any glimpse, I mean, you know, like, when you, because I, like, I don't really put the heating on in my house because I'm tight. I'm like, <laughs> if it's slightly warm outside, I'm gonna know by the temperature of my house. So I, mm. I'm, or I'm never gonna walk out that door with a jumper on when it's hot. It's just not gonna happen. Because happen. because you basically live outside just with walls. <laughs> I mean, t- you exactly. got the same ambient I'm, temperature throughout. I live in a really old house as well, so it, it's like single glazing. You can really feel everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> what you fucking lunatic! What is wrong with you? Like. Just... <laughs> It's like you're punishing yourself for something. Just used to it. I've got yeah. to find some sort of, you know, punishment to write, you know, songs about sad things. Yeah, Otherwise, I just yeah. write songs about dogs. Yeah, yeah so I don't Falling wear a jumper over. and my house is single glazed. So I never turn the heating on and I sit in the freezer with ice cubes <laughs> down my pants. Um, but just, you know, just because that's what you do in the north, apparently. Oh, We love it. I love it. to feel pain. <laughs> love it. Uh, God. So that isn't sad or happy because it would never happen to you. Is that what you're saying? That is would, a, a the, the occasion would never occur. It's, irre- oh, it's okay. irrelevant. It's uh, irrelevant more than anything. It's irrelevant. Um, mm. I've got. Um, I've got, got got another one here for you. So uh, this one is. Um, it's a contentious one. Um, it's putting socks in the freezer 
when it's too warm out. Does that the idea of that make you sad or happy? Put putting socks in the freezer. Yeah. So putting socks in a freezer to when it's too hot out and you need some cold cold feet. Um, so yeah, to to <laughs> clarify, you then put the cold socks on. I think is what Jamie's getting at. Yes, the, the act of putting the socks in the freezer isn't the end of the whole thing. It's 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 what that comes. is obscene. Surely no one's ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> People done that. <laughs> that sort of thing. I, I, we, I, uh, I, we had we had sea girls on the show, and they they tweeted about it. And then when Jamie asked them about it, they claimed to have no recollection of ever tweeting it. So who knows? But they did. <laughs> it's out there. No, I don't know. No, because the socks would then take on moisture, and then once yeah, the... exactly, it's ludicrous. Oh, we had this discussion. That is, that is one of the stupidest things <laughs> ever. <laughs> Whoever does that is a, is a freak, and I've got must have awful feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not, you're not even thinking about the feet, are you? Like the feet would be an absolute state oh in that situation. Um, but oh, <laughs> the socks yeah. in the freezer when it's too warm out is. <laughs> I, it's, That's a definite sad. It's a definite sad, if not oh, if not more it, than that. Made me genuinely sad. It's furious. <laughs> actually made you upset. <laughs> oh god. I'm just li- I'm livid. I'm livid at that. <laughs> um, oh, we've got another one. Uh, David Blaine, as in the person David Blaine. Um, we've had discussions mm. on our end about David Blaine about um, his magic or his lack of magic in particular. Um, I think your response to this is going to be going to really. Decide for me whether you're a good person or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So there's my my current. When I was 14 years old, I think I thought he was like a genius. I was yeah. like, that guy can levitate. He's you know he's got all the sick card tricks. Um, yeah. And I'm into him. I love him. Channel mm. Four, Midnight, whatever channel that program was on. <laughs> that was but it. now I think I think he's. Um. Just fucking weird, man. Like, <laughs> there we go. Correct answer. Correct answer. Like, Correct what, answer. I saw him. I saw a thing where he was on Joe Rogan's podcast, and he was like making Joe Rogan push a needle through his arm. Oh. And Joe Rogan really didn't want to, and he was like, oh, "No, I don't want to." And he was like, "No, you need to push the needle through my arm." Yeah. And it's just like, what are you? I think, yeah. yeah like, it, it, you know what? Like, you going on the podcast? Like, it's like us on the podcast. If you said that to me, I'd be like, "What?" I just, I just want to do. It. I don't want to do that. We'd hit a just can't have a nice time, you know. No needles, <laughs> no, no arms. That's it. No, that's a no, isn't it? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Not, not, yeah, not for me anymore. You know, back in the day, I was into him, but now I'm sort of, um, I've, I've grown up a little bit more. You know what I mean? And you're like, you're like, I've had enough yeah. of this. Maybe he should do the same, eh? You know, <laughs> that's yeah, it. If you're <laughs> listening, grow up. If you're listening, Tell me about it. yeah, that's it. David Blaine's tuned in right now. He heard his name from afar, and he's like rushed <laughs> over to the fucking. He's there Took floating plane. above fucking San Francisco in a balloon, <laughs> whatever he's doing at the moment, <laughs> listening to a podcast. Um, I'm more into like you know, you know, mature, mature magicians. Who's Paul your Daniels, yeah, that sort of thing? Of Paul, Paul Daniels. Yeah, exactly. Go. That's it. Yeah, I was about to say, what magician <laughs> are out. you into? Like, and, and it's the old school, is it? It's the the classics. What magician are you, you know, into? Uh, as if we've all got. We, a did, top. Um, we did go into. In, we were in LA. and We went to. Have you heard of the Magic Castle? Yes. Is it? Is that the? Is that the? It's like not secret society. Is that a secret society, or is that something else? Am I thinking of? That's the Magic Circle, uh, isn't it? Uh, no. It's, it's quite secret. Yeah, you have to wear. You can only go there by invitation only, and when you get there, you have to wear like a suit and tie and if you have we didn't have a suit and tie on so they, they give you a suit and a tie <laughs> and then they have to like say a magic word and then it's just full of like loads of rich weirdos watching like close up magic and all sort of like getting off on it instead of that's so odd. And Who invited you? you? Who was the invitation from? Was it David Blaine? Were you like, yeah, cheers, but you are It was from David, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just call him Dave. Yeah. Oh yeah. Davey. Davey B. I've got the yeah, he's our tour manager. Oh god! I've got this image of yeah, like managing. I've got this image of you guys just turning is this up your ride and being like, "What on earth is this?" You know, we've got to give it a go, though. I understand why you had to go, but um, it's a good laugh. You know, it's not every day you get to go to a castle of magic. It's true. It's Sorry, true. Kieran, you have to wear a suit and tie. No, I just wear a t-shirt, no matter how cold it is. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Look out! Oh, amazing, amazing. <laughs> um, 
Uh, oh, do, do, right, we have a, I've got one. Do you have I've any got more? one ready to go. There we go. Go for it, Jake. Yeah, one more. Uh, food that's reduced to like 13p in the supermarket, but it goes out of date that day. Does that make you sad or happy? Oh, very happy. I'm all about that. The oops aisle. <laughs> yeah. I live yeah. for it. Yeah. No, yeah. You'll often that's find it. me hanging around there in Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I like to knock around with my mates. <laughs> Look for a cheap fish. <laughs> Are you just making like a um, circle around it as well, where you're just like you're waiting for the bus yeah, to man. come over with the, uh, for the gun. Bring... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I love it. Well, I... like I'm, a, I'm a big sort of, I'm a, I'm a freezer guy anyway. You know, I'll buy a lot of things and um, and put them, put them in the freezer. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. So, so socks, that kind of thing, yeah. Socks, yeah. Mainly socks, to be honest. Chicken and socks. <laughs> chicken yeah. and socks. <laughs> Sometimes I, sometimes I wrap my chicken in my socks. Uh, just, you know. <laughs> For fun. It just keeps better. It, it does. It does, famously. <laughs> oh, oh, a very... But, you know, if you freeze and stuff, it doesn't matter. When, it doesn't matter if it's going to go off that day. So, like, that's... Um, yeah. I always you worry, know, you, though, you, if it's going out that day, you're like, right, when will this be frozen? Like, how long does the freezing process take, right? So you got some fish, you put it in the freezer at 8 p.m., and it goes out at 12 p.m., 12 a.m., whatever you say. <laughs> is that four hours going to be enough for it to freeze, or is it going to freeze slightly off? Ooh. I think you could... Fr- <laughs> Ooh. The real question I think, a, I think a fish probably freezes within, like, half an hour. Yeah. Within half an hour? They're, they're used to the yeah, ocean, man. If, if you've got, like, a, a cod... If you've got, like, sorry, a, a breast no, sorry, of cod... Sorry, can we just go back to what Jamie just said? They're in the ocean, <laughs> as if that affects... Yeah. Anything. No, but well, they're, they're in the water all the time. They're in the cold already. So, like, them going so back into they, the cold. they freeze in more time because they don't freeze when they're in the water. Surely they've got a well, lower water, freezing point. Water's not. No. no. Fish freeze quick, man. <laughs> I've got, all right. I've, I've got, that, I've that, got did not need, that was not a tone that could be argued <laughs> yeah, with. Yeah, that yeah. Was, uh... they, they freeze quickly. That's I feel like experience. you should do, like, a thing. You should do a thing on this podcast where at the end... You got like you. You can now go and research if this is true, and then at the end of the podcast, you can say we can confirm a fish freezes in thirty-seven minutes. We will. Like the list they have at, at the end of films, where it's like catches up with the characters ten years later, but it's like you know yeah. we froze a fish and can confirm it takes twenty-eight minutes. Thing is, I do actually have some yeah. fish in the fridge, so I actually could go and do that. Um, no, that's not a fair test because if you've got it in your shopping bag, it's not going to be fridge temperature. Is you are, it? Yeah, you are correct. You have to exactly. leave it out of the fridge for half an hour or so and then put it in the freezer. No, nah, maybe next week. Maybe next week. God. Uh, but that, that was Sad Happy. <laughs> the Sad Happy game. We've got plenty of answers out of that. Uh, and we know now that, you know, fish in the freezer is all right and don't put your socks in there. Heavens above. You're a freak. Um. <sighs> Kieran, I, I I hate to say not it. you, Kieran. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Just clarified. Um, Kieran, I'm oh, sure actually, I do have one. I, I do have one more thing that I wanted to run by quickly. Um, <laughs> the guy Martin, who writes for the magazine, does some lists of top things occasionally, and he's done us a top ten of waves. I want to want to get your uh, opinion on on how you fare. So I'm going to read out the list to you. You're in there somewhere, but you're not at the top. Okay. Mm. Um, I know, unbelievable, so, isn't it? Uh, no, just as statement. So this is this is the list. Number one is a cheery wave. Hello, uh, wave the hand back and forward with open fingers. Uh, number two <laughs> is a cheery wave. Hello with closed fingers. Uh, number three is a caramel wafer, which I don't think is a wave. That's not fine. a wave. Um, number four is a tidal wave. Number five is a microwave oven. Number six is circa waves. Number seven is gamma waves. Uh, number eight is electromagnetic rays, which I assume he means waves. This yeah, this is falling over. apart. It's all, all um, over the place. Uh, and then what? We got, a gentle acknowledgement, a small raise of hand, fingers closed. Thing you do when you stop to let a car pass. Respectful. <laughs> and then at number ten is the song "Say Hello, Wave Goodbye." How do you feel about your placement there, Kieran? Uh, yeah, I feel like it's justified. I'm um, I'm happy with where we where we arrived. I don't know why he's put tidal waves so high. Mm. No, surely um, that's not that's a, a good vibe wave. for anyone, is that's it? That's a horrible wave. Like, that's yeah, I'm dangerous. pretty sure that's like the they're evil. Yeah, I'm pretty. You know, I mean, like I'd, I'd, 
I think the Beatles should go above tidal waves, in my opinion. But, you know, <laughs> not my list. <laughs> on your list. <laughs> just saying. Also, I love, I love, I love the idea. You're just like your your thinking is well, we're not as like lethal or fatal as a tidal wave. So that means we should at least be above the tidal wave. Everything else is justified, though. Mm. Also, waving, waving with your hat fingers open does that. I'm just doing it right yeah, now. It's that, weird, that's, isn't that's it? Quite, uh, it's someone weird. did that to me. That's almost like that's what you do to someone when you're trying to test whether they're like awake, like if they've had a fall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> yes. You know, can you see me? Kind of thing. Yeah, I'm which not... I guess is a kind of wave hello, but it's not very cheery, is it? No. But then you, all, no one also puts the fingers like super tight together because that's <laughs> that's quite harsh. <laughs> that feels weird as well. That's quite harsh, isn't it? Like I'm doing it now. Obviously, you just I think everyone sort of, is. Sort of relax the fingers, haven't you? <laughs> Yeah, Still kind of relax them. Just an easy wave. Yeah, I don't know. Never studied anyway, my fingers. Really, <laughs> what this is is an extremely long way of saying that we're going to give you a cheery wave goodbye now. Yeah, Jim. we're going to have to wave you off. I'm afraid. Um, obviously, kind of closed fingers, but you know, not as open as the other fingers. We've... Relax fingers. Relax, relax fingers. Relax fingers. Yeah, we're going to we're going to give you a, a wave off. Um, cheers for stopping by. We'll we'll let you. You know. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Get on with you know. Get on with life. Um, obviously, create those and you, public uh, announcements. You had a song request. Mm. You had a song request, Kieran. Um, we asked you before we recorded what song you wanted to play, and uh, you gave us an answer that we weren't expecting. So, what is it you're after? Well, Gangsters Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> and then we said very quickly. Yeah, I didn't know you covered it. I just didn't. I must have missed that on the uh, on the album. Was that but, a live yeah. <laughs> Um Oh, one of our songs. There we go. One of yours. It's possible, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, oh no, well I said um, you could do a, a tune called Something More, which was on something we put out, I can't remember, but it's on the internet. It was on, um, it was on, an, it was on an EP, wasn't I, it? It was on an EP? Or, or it, it was like on that. like a post, I think it was on a post, it was like after the album we put like a four or five tunes out. Nice. But you know, like this, the song was about it was my sort of like version of common people or my attempt at like that sort of thing. Yes. But like I never went to university. So it was like me imagining going to university because <laughs> I never got the chance to. <laughs> so it's like actually a really pathetic song. <laughs> really? Oh, that's it. the one you've chosen out of everything you've ever recorded. <laughs> it's hey, but it's not it's it's sad, but it's brilliant. Sad. But brilliant, Great. Uh, sensational stuff. Uh, Kieran, thank you for stopping by. Uh, we will, we will catch you again soon. Um, we will we'll see you in a bit. This is this is something more uh, by Circle Waves. And I spent the last of my overdraft on this cold night. So pick me up if you're brave enough, and we'll kill some time. There he goes, off into the sunset. Another, off into the sunset. Uh, off to his freezer. Um, on off to his freezer full of chicken out. and socks. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever go a around troubled to come young dine man, with me, if I ever heard one. Yeah, if we ever do come dine with me uh, around Kieran's house, just be aware if the chicken gets served up. Um, where it's been. That's all I'm, yeah, all I'm that's saying. A, that's a cottony um, chicken a lovely right stuff. there. A lovely guy. A lovely guy. Um, Shall we, uh, shall, we, shall we talk about some uh, new music out this week now? Some, some I think tracks, we should probably you know? talk about some new music, yeah. It would be nice, yeah, I think. Some tracks, um, some new why music. Why don't you kick us off um, with something, uh, something spicy? Yeah, why not? I've got a little bit of spicy one. Uh, let me talk to you about uh, Fickle Friends. Uh, long-standing friends of the magazine. Uh, have been on the cover, you know. Uh, have, have, I think they were in the very first issue of Dork as well. You know, originals, if you will. Um, mm. They don't get anything for that, just our, our undying affection. Um, but they're back with a brand new track, and it's called uh, What A Time. And uh, yeah, Fickle Friends have always done pop really well, haven't they? Like, they know how to just write an amazing pop song, great pop songwriters. Yeah. They've, they've kind of been, they've been teasing like, them songs, you know, they came up with like, Pretty Great, um, I guess a few months ago now, which is a real, like, absolute, just a 
lovely little pop song. Uh, and they're back with this new one called What a Time. And uh, it's slightly more like, I don't know, like they've kind of delved into kind of like, I guess, dance music a little bit more. Um, they've kind of really gone for it. And um, this song is just like a big world of like pop sensibilities, but with like just, yeah, really great. Um, just like yeah, like dance tracks around it. Like it's just it's, it's a really really nice song, and it kind of signals it's like growth in the band. Do you know what I mean? And it's really mm. nice to see. Um, but they're gearing up for yeah, a brand new EP called Weird Years Season One that's going to be out in January. So you know you can gear up for that. Um, they've kind of spent time kind of like you know playing around with their sound, and it's just great to have them back. And um, yeah, it's just a real gem of a song. Um, so yeah, it's a cracker. Um, <laughs> less talk, more music. They say. Uh, yeah, this is Fickle Friends. What a time. to have fickle friends back you know it is it, what a great good song as well what a, what a nice one always good to to hear that first one and think oh they still got it you know yeah yeah really nice so, yeah i'm intrigued to see what they do next like uh yeah they're long-standing favorites and uh yeah really excited exciting stuff which is always mm. the best kind of stuff compared to miserable stuff which exactly. isn't as exciting it's not exactly. that's true um switching a lanes a bit a bit jamie oh yeah I've, here we go uh, i've got a track um which i enjoy Ooh. very much uh it's the new oh, frisco track uh so it's frisco featuring the rest of boy better know but it's kind of been billed as just a boy better know ensemble cut that frisco's done the hook on as well on the verses uh filmed nice. over lockdown in central london um so lots of london shots some absolutely mm. great verses in it Absolutely brilliant beat on it. Uh, and for some reason, Skepta is wearing a T-shirt that he's cut the sleeves off with insane clown posse on the front of it. Um, <laughs> so I would urge you to watch the video if you can, because it confirms not only that Skepta is a juggalo, but also that Shorty doesn't know how to use a phone because he stands in a phone booth holding it sort of a foot away from his face and pointing at it a lot. Um, which it's been is, a long time fair, since you've needed it. I feel you know? like in that he's gone, yeah, we'll get one of me in the phone booth. Then he's picked the phone up and gone, oh, I don't want to put this to my ear. I don't not want yeah, to put a London... I don't, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as you said, Especially, less, yeah, less yeah, talk, yeah. more, so, little less conversation, a little more action, please, as Elvis Presley Ooh. once said. Um, so this is Frisco's new track, Red Card, off of his upcoming album featuring Boy Better Know. And if you act too hard, then that's a red card. I can make a new business plan. I can round up a hundred niggas in the trenches. Going against me, that's stupid. Beef with me is expensive. I hope you trust in your friendship. Gonna need a full clip, something extended. No way, I'm not your father. If I gotta put him in care, better know that's something intensive. Man, I go zero to a hundred. Man, so passive aggressive. Pull up outside and something offensive. I do not care what the ends is. Fuck who's in fashion. I do not care what the trend is. I step on the stage, it's murder. BBK might headline the festival. Got the fans jumping the fences. Every time I went in, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I once played Elvis <laughs> in a school nativity play, actually. Um, well, you I played, was, like, well, you I played, play, what did you play him as chess or? Uh, no, no, like, I, no, I played, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I played uh, Pharaoh in uh, Joseph and his amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, and I got the role because I was the most like Elvis, which, looking back on, I don't think it's a compliment. Cause well, the you last spent the time most time in the toilet. Elvis, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I was, in the nicest way, I think I was fat Elvis. Yeah. Um, Jamie, Jamie yeah. can play Elvis because he's always wearing a white jumpsuit. He's really fat and he keeps eating out loaves of bread filled with bacon. So uh... Yeah, he can, he can do this role. Um, so yeah, I'm a famous <laughs> Elvis impersonator. <laughs> looking back on it, actually, I think I'm a bit offended. I've only just realised that... Bring him up. Hey. Give him what for? What, my, my, my primary school head, head teacher? <laughs> just yeah. uh, quick one. <laughs> Uh, do you remember me? Uh, it's been a while, um, but hold on, you kind of fucked me over there. Uh, a wild run, <laughs> a wild run for Elvis, a wild run for me. Um, without the Class A drug addiction, um, I was only like seven years old. Um, I simply couldn't do it at that point. That was way too much for me. Um, but it was good fun. It was good fun. Should we move on to? Uh, good to hear. Should we, should we Glad you got that out of your system. Music? Yeah, 
I just need to get like, get rid of it all. It was a real emotional moment. Oh God. Do you know what's also an emotional moment? Um, a band um, called the Cool Greenhouse. Uh, mm. Brand new music. Um, so they, you know, they put out an album already, like debut album. That was like in May, and they're already back with some new music, like a real, like kind of like yeah, new, like fresh band. Um, they've been doing some really interesting stuff, and this song kind of like really caught our attention, didn't it, Jake? Because uh, it's called Alexa, and um, the best way I can put it is like, I guess I get real like it's kind of like LCD sound system vibes in terms of like losing my edge. It's very direct and talking about things going on like here and now and you know name checking you know all sorts you know about the band and about you know automated radio stations and mm. you know calling out to alexa for some songs to be played um i think it's just really cool and exciting isn't it i gotta say there is a bit in it i like the bit where they say start it again and then pretend to start the song again that's quite fun <laughs> there is a bit where they say if you tell alexa to play the cool greenhouse it calls greenhouse suppliers and that's just how it's <laughs> angled towards white middle class consumers. And I was like, I mean, realistically, I think there's probably more people in the country that that need a greenhouse than listen to. No slight on the band. Lots of people have greenhouses, you know. Here we are. They're a good Here band. They're a new band, and one day they will be bigger than greenhouses. But right now, I think my nan would rather have a greenhouse supplier, to be honest, than listen but to the cool greenhouse. Also, also, I love it. One day you will be bigger than the concept of greenhouses. <laughs> yeah, one day. You work hard. If you <laughs> listen to listen to us, kids. <laughs> if you work hard, you work enough, hard. One day you'll be bigger than a greenhouse. You'll be bigger than a quite old-fashioned way of storing plants in a heated room without paying mm. for any bills. Um, you can you can be that one day, and we can dream. Uh, but until then, you just get us into the cool greenhouse. Uh, yeah, this is Alexa. Alexa. Um, I'm not a fan okay. of Alexa as a whole. Yeah, I find no? it a bit... I'm just not a guy... I don't like to... Sh well, <laughs> I was about to say I don't like to shout for songs to be played, but uh, as Yeah, I think basically Jake you just get it all out your system on this podcast and then you can't be bothered to do it in real life. I just go, oh, you know what, it's actually fine. Just fuck it. Um, wonderful stuff. Uh, cool Greenhouse. Exciting as well. New band doing really interesting things. And yeah, check them out. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I'm going to change okay. lane again. We've gone quite, uh, oh, the quite, lanes are quite zigging and zagging, quite hither and thither today. Uh, Put your indicators as, as, on, for the love of God. Exactly. You'll cause an accident. Stick your hazards oh. on and start slaloming, because it's advanced <laughs> training, and I've just made you aquaplane. Uh, this, uh, this next one... <laughs> oh, I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> I felt like Alan Partridge then. Yeah, put, uh, it, put, it, on, put, put it on a T-shirt. Put it on a T-shirt. <laughs> Stand up. Stand up. Uh, <laughs> what lane are you on? What lane have you had uh, now? Oh, mate, who knows? Um, the new Scissor <laughs> track. Scissor is back uh, with an excellent song called Hit Different with uh, Ty Dolla Sign and the Neptunes. And like, it's just kind of like vintage. Like, It's just what she does best. It's that really unique, uh, just it, it's it's different to the first album, but I'm listening to it. I was like, I'm so glad she's stuck to like what she's good at this kind of R and B vibe, but with a you know that pop sensibilities there as well. Like it's mm. just great, and I'm really glad that the two, the Ty Dolla Sign feature is is good. And there's a little got a little verse in there about halfway, but it's not too intrusive. It still feels very much like a Scissor song. Because you know when you see there's a couple of features, you're a bit like, oh, is it going to be sort of you're worried one verse that point, for everyone kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, you're worried. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think she, yeah, it's, it's done really well, and it's just so obviously one of her songs. It's got her all over it. Um, and I'm really excited for the for the new album and the, the next track to come out. So yeah, this is Hit Different by Scissor. Boy, can't trust a scissor when you near me Get myself caught in your crossfire You are all I want And I'm waiting for 
big fan of that and and big fan of of scissors you know that that debut album was incredible wasn't it mm, and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's good I, and yeah it, like you say it's good to see that you know um well there was a point you know, good. before the before the debut where she sort of said oh i'm done with music i'm not going to bother um and then it, obviously that came out so it was fine. Yeah, but uh, it's so just fine. good. To, it, it's no, but you know, it's good to see this more stuff coming because it is sort of like she's one of those artists where I think you know would quite happily in the mold of like Andre three thousand from Outcast, like just get to a point where they're like, you know what, I'll just do what I want to do, which would be great. Yeah. But also, I'd quite like some albums, so I am glad that she's <laughs> back at it. You know, I would quite like some albums, please. Yes, for the, the love of please just hand them please. over and get on with your life. Just give us an album, just please. <laughs> uh, wonderful stuff. Um, wonderful. We're talking of albums. Oh, hey, there it is. It, oh, we're getting really good at this. That's all I'm saying. Mm, um, excellent. It's time for our like focused album of the week this week, and uh, it it couldn't be anyone else but old Declan McKenna, uh, who has dropped his second album. Zeros, which is out in the world, and uh, yeah, it feels like it's been building for for quite a while now. It's exciting stuff. Obviously, he was on the cover of Dork uh, mm. last month, and yeah, back with a second album. And all we're going to say is it's a belter. I love cool. that. Should we just call I it there? Great. Should we just call it there? Yeah, should we just call it <laughs> yeah. there? That's all yeah. we need to say, that's isn't it? Really? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Right, yeah, cool. I'll just put my pants down now. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Um, <laughs> no, 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 hold on, hold on. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. Um, Declan McKenna, Zeros, wonderful album. We're going to talk about it more. Uh, but let's play the opening track on the album, which, when I first heard it, was just like, okay, he's not fucking around anymore. Uh, this is, uh, you better believe, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, maybe another exclamation mark, I don't Watching know. Say, I am so happy that bands have just. I mean, Declan McKenna is spearheading. I'm just going to play glam rock now. Mm. Just love it. That's it. Absolutely. It's taken years, and he's you know, about, and someone's finally gone. You know what? Glam rock was great. Give me some fucking platforms with a goldfish in them, and I will blow your head off. <laughs> That's it. I and and this is the whole thing with this album. Um, I think yeah, as a whole, it's just like this is. <laughs> It's the sound of like an artist just going for it, and like that sounds like a really simple way to describe it all, but it's him just going for it and just nailing it. Like we, we, when you heard his debut album, it, you know, what do you think about the car? It was like you know you could you could tell he was special, and yeah, that album was brilliant as well. Um, but and this is like this you can tell, as well, like you know, that's yeah, what's so yeah, great. Is if you listen back to the debut, and it's really good. But this is the yeah. sound of someone whose debut was well enough received that they've got the freedom then to go just completely mm. foot to the floor with everything they want to do. Oh. And I love yeah, it. I love that it. it's not crowd managed. It's not like focus grouped. It just really does sound like he's gone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this album, and they've just gone. Everyone's just gone. Yeah, fine, go for it. And then it's been released, and like, what an album! It is just and he's willing to just mental. dial it up. Yeah, he's, he's just 100%. dialing it up, isn't he? He's just literally like, okay, he, he'll write. You see, it sounds like he's like he'll write a song on this album, for example, and then he'll just be like, okay, so can I just turn it up a little bit more and like do and a little bit more, just a little bit, and more. A little bit more, <laughs> and, and it's and it's just and it just absolutely bangs, you know. It, it it's honestly incredible. I mean, like you heard obviously with the singles like the key to life on earth and beautiful faces. I guess beautiful faces in a weird way is you know, kind of like the closest track that you've got to like the first album in a lot of ways. Well, I think the singles were quite deceptive in that. I think like the singles yeah. were the singles sounded like that was the direction he was moving in, and then you actually listen to the album, and you're like, wow, you've really hidden the uh, the craziest <laughs> stuff on here. You know, yeah, the singles yeah, yeah, were almost yeah. the gentle, the shallow end. You know. The gentle, like, mm. the, the toe in the water, and then before you know it, you're, you're right in there. 
you're, you're swimming. You're just swimming around in it. I think what I like about this as well is like the first album, and I guess Declan's early years was like, you know, he he was an incredible songwriter who had the ability to kind of like talk very directly about certain issues. You know, like he would talk about, you know, songs like Brazil, where he's talking about, you know, the World Cup and kind of, like, you know, the corruption and everything like that, and or, or you know, paracetamol and like, like that, there were so many. You know, very direct songwriting. Whereas this is kind of like, in a lot of ways, he's still, you know, he's talking about big issues in here, but he does it in a way where it's more just like, do you know what? I'm just willing to kind of like, I don't know, dream a little bit more and be quite more open. And the result is just an album that I genuinely, I think I'll be playing for the rest of the year. Um, and mm, like, it just agreed, stands yeah. apart from, it stands apart from so many other albums, you know, and many albums that we've talked about here on this show. It It's a fun album. It's an album that is so up for experimenting and going out there, but is like pulled back in by him. You know, it's pulled back think, in by yeah, him he's, he's, and he's his voice. Balanced, he's balanced doing what he wants to do and being out there with not being an absolute wanker, I think is the thing. <laughs> I think there's so many, bands, so many bands where you get that album where they're like, this is the album we wanted to make. And you're like, oh, I, you know, it's just a bit too, you know, lost in itself. And they haven't had mm. anyone there to pull them back and say like, look, this is going on a bit too long. This isn't actually that great a song. Your five minute <laughs> recital of a poem that no one's ever heard isn't actually a good opener for the album, you know? But I love Beautiful. the fact that, that Declan McKenna is just like, I'm going to make the album I want to make. And also, I'm just going to prove to you all that I have the absolute best sense of what makes a great album. And he's just pulled it yeah. off. Yeah. And also, it's like that, like that first song, you better believe, where like just talking about going to the shop and getting some quavers. Yeah. Like, great. Absolutely sensation. great. I love it. <laughs> Why not? Why not? No, you know? not sensations, like, Jamie. Quavers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah, little crisp <laughs> joke for you. A little crispy one. Um, but I just, yeah. What What do you make about some of these compar- Like people have kind of chucked out online. I've seen this quite a lot from a few different places because they're trying to obviously compare him to, you know, you naturally try and compare him to other artists or you, you do whatever. And kind of one I've seen a lot of is like people talking about, oh, like him and like David Bowie. And that's obviously, it's a wild comparison for, number one, anyone to be compared to David Bowie. And not in a sense of no one can touch him, but he's, he was an artist in his own world and, you know, completely an original well, in that of, sort think, of sense. I get, what, I get what they're saying in that, but they're actually comparing, yeah. they're saying Ziggy Stardust more than David Bowie, aren't they? Mm, like, mm, mm, this is mm. the thing, right? They, it's, it's just, I think basically that, that Ziggy Stardust album has been one of the only classic albums that has survived from glam, basically. And I think the thing yeah. with it is people are going like this album is glam rock, but most people's like touchstone for that is Bowie in in the peak of of early Bowie. But to me, yeah. like this is almost this is almost some of the crazier like Slade songs, you know, not the Christmas yeah. stuff. But you know, this is like, <laughs> I mean, this is I think this is just like someone who has listened to every glam album ever and just distilled it down into because a lot of glam is absolutely terrible and very naff but he's just picked absolutely cherry picked the best bits added a load of like what makes him special and taken it into 2020 and i think it works so well um i think mm. most bands trying to do glam would come off as the hammiest thing on the planet but this works so well and it's because of that stuff like yeah like you say talking about going and getting some quavers like you can't take yourself too seriously if you're going to be as bombastic as this you know yeah yeah and also it's very hard to be as bombastic and yet not just fall into a all right, this is fucking nonsense. Do you know what I mean? Mm, it's a very mm. fine line. And he's able to do that. And the fact that he's able to pull it off on this album and in such an amazing way, it's suddenly like, okay, like, like there's, there's no one out here. I think it sets him apart from the rest. You know, I think it just yeah. solidly sets him apart. He, an, an incredible like album act, but he's still in like for a, for a certain generation, which is very hard to do. I feel you know, for, mm. for someone, you know, of that generation, you know, of a, of that, or a young generation of a generation right now, to be able to do that is just, it's just stunning. Um, and, and it just makes you just go like, wow, like what else, you know, <laughs> again, this is only just the beginning for him. This is like album number two, like you, you could just go from anywhere and he just takes it all in his stride and you're just, you know, I'm just... I'm completely blown away by how good this album is. Yeah. And same. I'm, I, you know, the, the tracks like Rapture, which are just like proper, sp- like just absolutely spin you out in the best way. Oh, yeah, I mean, you what, never know what's coming next, do you? After one yeah, track's like over, you never know what's coming next. Yeah, like twice your size, 
that hits, you know, eventually Darling at the end just feels like this like, kind of epic album. Cut. And I just rate someone who's willing to just be silly, but and also just give themselves to being just this epic, you know, go for the epic, go for the really wild shout, you know. I, I, it's just a stunning, stunning, stunning album. Um, I can't say enough about it. And it's kind of, it's almost in a lot of ways, the per- like almost the perfect album for for us here, you know, for for for, for that for Dork, you know, it's just like a big fun album that will mm. just stand the test of, test of time. Doesn't take itself too seriously, but at the same time puts itself out there. Um, I just think it's an incredible, incredible album, and I just yeah, just go and listen to it for the love of God. Well, let's right, um, let's play another song from it. Seeing as you're just repeating yourself now because you're so overcome <laughs> with awe at the album, I'm just uh, blown away. I'm just. I can't uh, why don't we it. play? Um, um, be an mm. astronaut, because yes. I think we'd all like to be an astronaut, wouldn't we, Jamie? Floating we further and further away from the tiny marble of planet Earth in the vacuum, knowing that no one could ever save us and we'll never see anything living again. Wondering Why whether to me... detach the helmet and <laughs> oh, end right, it all, okay. or uh, just yeah. all right, keep yeah, yeah, floating yeah, all right, all right. towards infinity and just hope that nothing hits you. And, oh, Jay, so, yeah, Jay, Jay, what? Sorry. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You've, you've gone to. You've, it's happened again. I'm just saying. It's ah, happened again. Uh, well, here's Be an Astronaut by Declan McKenna. Here's, here it is. Here it is. They'll probably make up your mind as if you want them to. Oh, you, those boys, tell you what to do all the time. Oh. That's, I mean, that song is probably the perfect and you know distillation that of that if, album. Even if you do manage to cling on to something, it's just going to be as lifeless as everything else in space. And maybe that's the right. beauty of it, you know? Jake, 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 Jake. Declan McKenna, <laughs> Zeros, an amazing <laughs> album out now. Just go and listen to it. Fucking hell, just go and listen to it. All Incredible right, stuff. God, no need to swear. <laughs> Jesus. We've all had a beer, all right? We've all had a Have beer. Have we? It's all fine. Oh, I've been drinking <laughs> lemonade the whole time. Uh, uh, yeah, God, famously. Um, mm. Oh, God. Um, where do we go from there? Oh, I guess well, we go Jamie, to... Um... I hope you I hope you warmed up. <sighs> oh, shit. Okay, let's go for it. Um, give me a sec. <sighs> I guess it's time for... Um... Lovely. A little different affliction Beautiful. there, you know? Yeah, I enjoyed it. There. It is an affliction, yeah, that you've got. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say to me every time I go to the doctors. You're, you're a different afflicted. affliction this time, Mr. Muir. I was just like, oh, that's just like a nice little tinge, isn't it? More than anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, tweets of the week. Let's delve in. Jake, have you got one to kick things off? Yeah, I have, actually. Um, so, uh... Shame. You know shame. We've spoken about shame before. We've spoken about shame before. Uh, so, uh, Dead Oceans. Yes. Uh, in, the, um, who are their label? Is that correct? They are. They are. That's that's good. Top marks for you there. Uh, yeah. They've said, they've tweeted, all right, dot, 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 dot. Not saying there's Oof. a shame LP2 incoming soon, dot, dot, dot. But if there were, dot, 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 what do you think it's called? Jamie, any wow. suggestions? Um, long delayed for multiple replays, I reckon should be the the album title. Um, yeah, that's what I think. Or maybe I think it's going to be a double. Oh yeah, I think it's going to be a double barreled yeah. one. So I think it's going to be called the Shame N, and then colon Ebenezer Good, but Shame is obviously <laughs> the band. Uh. <laughs> I love that someone on the comments to this has just gone with the reply "dog shit Monday," uh, which actually does sound like <laughs> that a would great be a album very name. Good, that would be a great album name. Um, <laughs> that's it. Um, who, whoever said that they should they should hire they should hire shout they should be to, hired. Uh, shout out to Gareth O'Malley, you sir. 
win Gareth a can O'Malley of Coke. the Alley Cat. Um. <laughs> Famously. Famously. Um, wonderful stuff, Gareth. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Shane's album, apparently it's coming soon. Please someone just come just soon. About fucking time. And then someone else put <laughs> about fucking time, but starred out the you on fucking, because that's a family uh, account. It is. Yeah, it's a family account. Come on now, play the game. Twitter does not need that foul language. Famously, it doesn't. it's a it's a, a beacon of humanity at its best. And, it is. Uh, but the yeah. reason I suggested this tweet is um, I've actually got a little surprise yeah. for us, Jamie. Uh, well, I've got my hands. About? You know Mission Impossible? You know the first yeah. one? Um, yeah. I can't remember what happens, but basically whatever happens in that is what I had to do to get this. Uh, oh, this man. is a song from the upcoming yeah. Shame album. Um, no, what? Wait, hold on a second. What are you talking worldwide about? Worldwide <laughs> premiere. Uh, what are you talking no, I'm about? joking. I don't, I don't have a song. I've got nothing. Um, oh. so. uh, I thought I could keep that going, but I couldn't. You know, you were too excited. Um, no, I've got, I've got fuck all. Which is probably and the name of the album, mind. to be honest. <laughs> Uh, with that in mind, I've got a tweet. Uh, we've, got oh, two yeah. more, we've got two more. We've got two more tweets for you, uh, and this one is from famous, you know, rising songwriter Lewis Capaldi, uh, who I saw has sold one million albums today in the UK. Not bad. Yeah, Hold fame, up, mate. actually. Yeah, yeah, we've all been there. Come on, play the game, mm. catch up. I remember um, my first million, <laughs> <laughs> and I spent it all. I spent it all on, <laughs> on fizzy pop, I blew fizzy pop and inflatables. Races, Lewis. I, they're all, I've got nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lewis Capaldi has tweeted um, this, and so I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to sing it because he ends it yeah, with so can we to the tune. Up, can we cue up the, the beginning of Watermelon Sugar so that we get a sort of vibe? Um, yeah, yeah, it's like an instrumental. It's like so. It's like. And it builds, and then it just comes in with Shaggin' Alan Sugar, I'm Shaggin' Alan Sugar, I'm Shaggin' Alan Sugar, I'm Shaggin' Alan Sugar, Shaggin' Alan Sugar. Um, so to clarify, account- the, the tweet is. Shagging Alan Sugar, I'm, and then he does that three or four times. Then it says in brackets to the tune of Harry Styles' hit record, Watermelon Sugar. Um, Sensational. That's uh, a man who sold a million albums. He logged on, that man he thought there. of that, and he thought he'd tweet it. And to be that honest, if I knew I'd huge. get 125,000 likes from tweeting that, I'd tweet it too. Because you have the same following as Lewis Capaldi, famously. Well, that's the issue. Twitter, um, Twitter uh, removed all of all of those. I had all those followers, but Twitter got rid of them. They said it was unfair on everyone else for me to have so many. <laughs> and it fell apart. That's what they yeah, did. Yeah, it did. Um, it did. Didn't know that Lewis Capaldi was Weird Al Yankovic, but also, uh, <laughs> well, fair Weird play Al to you, is going to retire at some point. So good the to next have a, step for uh, Lewis Capaldi. Yeah, good to have a success. Album number two. Up. Album number two. Um, let's let's have a big sing along and let's just sing along. Obviously, we'll have to you know jump over the bits of Mr. Style singing, but this is uh, this is Watermelon Sugar, otherwise known as Shagging Alan Sugar. Shagging Alan Sugar, I'm. Shagging Alan Sugar, I'm. Shagging Alan Sugar, I'm. Shagging Alan Sugar. It does. Maybe it makes the song better. I Probably think it not, does. Actually. I enjoy it more. I, I, I'm glad uh, it's not what he says, but I enjoy the the tickle at the back of my brain, knowing that it could be. Yeah, it's nice in the mix. In the mix, uh, we've got one more tweet for you. This one is in pop from Jack Bevan, aka. Drummer of Foles, who has tweeted and said, uh, this is on September the 1st, he tweeted this, and he said, uh, got that autumnal first day back at school feeling. The air feels different. Got some new stationery. Tony Hawk 1 and 2 comes out in a few days. Um, so is this, is, this what happening, is this what is happening to bands 
now that obviously he can't play live at the moment. Are just regressing. Just going back to school? Like, 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 are we meant to be back at school? Maybe are it's like band back? school, you know? They're like, right, yeah. come along and we'll teach you how to get the crowd going, how to remember which ones of your lyrics are well known enough that you don't have to sing them and it's not embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, how to crowd surf without breaking anyone's necks? Um, yeah, I think um, they're they're rolling into um, <laughs> the school of rock, if you will. Uh, <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> and if you wanna be a teacher's pet, come on, Jake, baby, you better forget it. I can't rock work in no these reason. conditions. This is what I was saying. Look, listen to this. I've got to work with this guy. Can't we get a better rock got no rhymes? You better this get me is why I had long last week off. You know that. It was the stress of this moron. Producer Patrick. Sorry, uh, producer Patrick. Yeah, play Jamie. School of Rock. Play School of Rock. <laughs> don't. Don't play fucking a little bit play of School, school of Rock. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone off the rails. And if you want to be the teacher's pet, baby, you just better forget it. Rock on no reason. Rock on no ride. You better come into school long. Do you remember going back to school? Do I remember going back to school? It didn't just happen yeah, once. It wasn't. That, I mean, it did more than a year at school. Yeah, I remember <laughs> the feeling. Not a uh, nice one, was it? After no, a summer. Sorry, I'm still annoyed about the school of rot thing. Let me just have a breath. Yes, I remember. I remember. It was to be fair. I think going back to school was a pretty good one because you saw everyone. But then a few days in, it was yeah. like, oh, fuck. And also, I think I the worst thing now. about school was that you did it before work. Because now, if I went to school, I'd be like, this is fucking great. But, like, because I didn't have anything to compare it to, I thought, like, God, yeah. they want me to be here until, like, 3 p.m. Whereas now I'm, like, 3 p.m., early finish, nice one. Result. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. result at that point. Uh, mm. I am also excited for Tony Hawk 1 and 2, the remasters, to come out. I think they might actually be out yeah. by now, um, yeah, but I'm excited I so. to get those. Um, so the soundtrack Jack Febben, is the one, isn't it? You are correct. Yeah, and they've updated Hold the on. soundtrack, which is very good fun, and they've done it very Ooh. well. Big fun. But Big I'm fun. Thinking, well done, well done Jack. Yeah. I'm thinking we're going to play a Foles song. Um, yeah. Jack Bevan's got that back first day back at school feeling. I feel like maybe we could play one of the really early Foles songs where a lot of us were were at school nice. when they came out. Yeah, um, let's go so back I'm to school. The mega hit that was Cassius um, might be Oof. a good place to start. What do you think, Jamie? Oh, I think I like it. Uh, and it also kicks, kicks off really quickly, doesn't it? It's like one, two, three. It's like, ooh! Still goes. It still does. Goes. Does still go. Oh, amazing stuff. Um, if you're back at school, why are you listening to this? That's true. Actually, if you are back at school, pay attention uh, and don't ask your teacher like when you're going to use it in the real world because like actually it's all about getting a good grade. It's not about using it in the real world. So like, don't be a little shit. <laughs> don't be a little shit. <laughs> Someone's got to tell them, Jamie. <laughs> Um, it's understandable. It's understandable. Uh, this week, um, as we had an extended chat with uh, the lovely Kieran, um, we are not going to have a Hall of Fame. Um, mm. In fact, the Hall of Fame is going to become more sporadic, isn't it, Jamie, um, in general? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So do write in if that was your favourite bit, and we're happy to record you a Hall of Fame each week that we can just send out to you um, personally. Yeah. Um, just let yeah, us know. Yeah, it's easy. Um, yeah, easy, easy enough to do. Um, but yeah, no Hall of Fame this week. So I guess all that's left is predictions for the next week, Jamie. What do you think is going to happen in the next week? Oh, I think it's tricky. Um, I I reckon <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? It's hard. I I have a strong feeling um, that Youngblood is going to release a new like set of gel pens and properly bring back um, that golden era between mm. about 2008 and uh, 2011. 
Um, gel pens everywhere, all about. They'll be called young blood pens. And we'll be like, oh, can you pass that pen, please? And they're like, what are you talking about? It's like, the pen. They're like, oh, you mean this young blood pen? And then pens will be gone. And we will be writing with the paws of our fingers forevermore. Um, writing All that in, in the sweat. next six to seven days. Going to be a busy one, Jake. Prepare yourself. That's, I'm I going to my is, bunker yeah. after this. Um, <laughs> what about you? What are you thinking, think, Jake? What's that? I think that um, Jack Bevan is going to sprain his ankle in, a, in an accident that he'll never disclose to anyone, but was actually him attempting to do a <laughs> kickflip because if he was playing the new Tony Hawk and he thought, that looks easy enough. <laughs> Uh, but it wasn't, and he sprained his ankle. I think that's what's going to happen. And you heard it here first. Mm-hmm. Don't let him fool you. Don't let him fool you. Um, thanks to Kieran for, for coming on the show uh, this week. We'll obviously be back next week with more fun, more games, uh, and I believe a special guest as well. But you're going to have to tune in to see who that is. Exactly. Um, spoiler, spoiler, it's not me, it's not Jake, and it is not the Dalai Lama. Um, he's too busy. Oh, is it not? That's a shame. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's it for another week. So remember, guys, um, this is the end of the show, but it's not the end of your day. If you're listening to this and you've got a bit of washing up to do, why not get it out of the way now? That way you don't have to worry about it in the morning, you know? 